Star Wars, everybody's favorite topic. Today we're reviewing all the Star Wars fights from Star Wars franchise. We don't get all the ones from the Clone Wars or Rebels, but we do try to get out the main ones and talk about them, what we think about them. That said, let's get into it. All right, let's start out with Qui-Gon versus Maul. Um, okay. <clears throat> you know, this isn't really much of a fight, but it is the first time we see Maul. Um, like with a lightsaber and you could see that giant hilt and you kind of get that hint of like, oh shit, it's a double bladed, you know, or some, something's up with his lightsaber. Um, and it's a neat little like uh, teaser to the end of the movie. So I'm going to just. Yeah, he just here? stalls. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. average. There's not much to it. He just stalls. So C tier yeah. makes sense to me. Is this the first time? No, no, no. I was going to say, is this the first time we see Qui-Gon's lightsaber? But no, no, no. We see it. Really First wrong. time we see like two lightsaber people fight, I guess chronologically. <clears throat> yes, chronologically that is true. Um, right. So after this is the duel of the fates. I think yes. I can just speak for all of us when <laughs> I slap slapping this in a good old fashioned S tier. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not much to say about it that hasn't already been said, right? Yeah. I'll give a couple quick thoughts see if you guys have anything else to say but um yeah no i mean just an incredible fight some of the best music in the series um darth maul just you know doing his thing you get to see stuff we've never seen before uh the double bladed lightsaber obviously two versus one is always really exciting you get to see the different facial expressions and the different um like you can tell all these characters have a very different different me mentality during this fight. Qui-Gon's very calm and reserved. Darth Maul is very like energetic and just thirsty for blood and confident. And Obi-Wan is just very fucking stressed out and <laughs> like wanting to, you know. <laughs> he he, is he's very out, desperate. He? <laughs> he's desperate is what he is. He's probably scared too. And you can really see it. The acting is incredible. Yeah. Like I said, the music... The you choreography is amazing. The choreography is amazing. Um, yeah. Uh, beautiful ending. Classic. What do you guys think? Yeah. Good. Like it. When I like... Um, things to say? I like the... Uh, um, the state... So, that's right. So I was trying to formulate my thoughts. <laughs> uh, I like <laughs> the stakes in this fight. Because it's called Duel yeah. of the Fates. For I sure. think because this determines whether who becomes Anakin's master, right? Correct. Qui-Gon yeah. lives, Anakin is taught by Qui-Gon, which probably means he would not turn to the dark side. But right. if Qui-Gon died, then, you know, Obi-Wan's more of like a brother rather than a teacher, and he didn't really, he wasn't able to guide him. Right, um, we obviously see the events of that. Obi-Wan also wasn't like, Obi-Wan followed it. Like, Obi-Wan's very, like, vanilla when it comes to being a Jedi, right? He's, like, a perfect Jedi. Qui-Gon mm -hmm. would have probably encouraged Anakin to explore his emotions more, not suppress them. Right. And he probably would have felt, you know, felt like he had a place and not have to resort to being Darth Sidious. Right. So, so yeah, yeah, this like, fight just... Another yeah. reason why it's an S tier. It's a high-stakes fight, and unfortunately, exactly. Qui-Gon, um, I guess, lost probably because due to his it was Qui-Gon was very confident in this fight but he was I think he was just getting tired and lost and also yeah. too like Jedi also, don't spend a lot of time um getting good at combat usually so he ended up losing to a Sith, to a Sith. And especially because... and in addition uh just really quick in addition to that like keep in mind like they had never seen a Sith Lord before whatsoever yes. like a Sith Lord hadn't been seen yeah in, like, first time in like a thousand years, years. So. They were both probably years. extremely caught off, said. caught off guard. I guess now, Aaron? Acolyte, things are changing, but... <laughs> right. <laughs> Rewriting the lore, as Aaron? usual. Yeah? Yeah, everything else to add, Aaron? That's just what I was going to say, is that, they, you know, Sith hasn't been seen in a thousand years, so... Right. It's kind of... Okay, sweet. The first time they see a red lightsaber, ever. So... I think with stories... Um, and we can move on from here to Anakin and Count Duke, or Anakin and Obi Wan versus Count Dooku. I believe that's the next chronological um, fight. Yeah, 
Alrighty, so yes. Aaron, you want to lead this time? Um, sure. And I think everything we have to say about this fight, we already really touched on in our our tier list of the movies. That was a pretty big reason why we put this uh, movie in C tier. Well, for this video, um, let's explain it again. Yeah, it's just you know, kind of. What's what's the word? It's kind of um, it's not very uh, clear what's going on, really. You know, the choreography is very choppy, and when it's not choppy, it's very stagnant and bland. There's not a lot going on. I don't know if that's you know because it's not really wanted, much of a fight. Um, it's kind of Count Dooku kind of just smokes them both pretty quickly. <laughs> you see, he's on a different skill level. For sure, um, yeah, they're very underprepared, and Anakin's overconfident. Um, obviously, loses his arm. Um, they There's both... clear character development in this, though. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's, and there are some good parts. You know, obviously, there's some glimmers of good choreography in there. Um, but for some reason, whatever reason that may be, they just weren't able to kind of hold themselves up to the same standards that they had in episode one with the lightsaber fights. Um, very different, but, um, I don't know. What do you, how do you guys feel about, a? I think C tier on this one. Yeah. Mid? C tier. Or do you want to put it there? Yep. I have C -tier. in C tier. I think yeah. I'm confident with it being at the low end of C tier. I think it won't yeah. stay there for the rest of the video too. And like Aaron was saying, it, it, it's kind of like, you don't see a lot because there's a lot of weird zoom ins on the face. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't know if that was uh, because they wanted <laughs> facial <that> expressions. Ewan <laughs> and um, my dear lord, what's his name, sir? The actor for Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee, yeah. I don't know if they wanted Christopher Lee and Ewan and Hayden to like be all the ones doing the the fights, right? And Christopher Lee really couldn't move like that. So they well, here's the thing, like, when they are face. showing the good stuff, he is moving really well. Yeah, that's true. He's sure. got a problem, definitely got a stunt double in there. Okay, yeah. I haven't seen it in a minute, but I, that was just... Yeah, we, we just rewatched it, so... Yeah, I, I don't remember it. Like, if you don't remember the fight very well, people watching, go back and rewatch it. There's, like, this whole part where, like, it's just going back and forth between Dooku's and Anakin's face. Yeah. <laughs> it's so goofy. You don't see the lightsabers. It's just, it's like... just woo, 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 and facial yeah. expressions. <laughs> so, definitely some odd choices there. Uh, but, yeah, it's not it's not bad. And there's some there's definitely things to like about it. Um, and that kind of leads us directly into Yoda versus <laughs> okay. Dooku. My turn to lead this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's so very similar, Yoda comes in, very different. <laughs> definitely somebody on Dooku's level now. Probably, actually, well, he is higher than Dooku's level because Dooku runs away in this fight because he knows Yoda would mess him up. <laughs> so, and also, too, we get to see Yoda do some absorb force lightning, which I don't think we've seen that before. Kind of cool. No, that was very cool. Um, we get to see Yoda's fighting style, Form 7, right? Uh, I believe Rose so. Rose eating himself around it's like crazy. Different. Like a monkey. Yeah. It's kind of neat. It's way more exciting than what we saw seconds before this. Uh, right. And basically, Dooku runs away. Basically, he's like, I can't do this. So he... I mean, yeah, it, you see that full change in Dooku's, like, like his whole demeanor is like, oh, okay. I'm shit. with... I'm, All right, I'm time to get Yoda serious. Like, yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> and you can um, see his fighting style, too, change a little bit, if I remember correctly. Like, he's more, like, he's way quicker. Yeah. Um, he knows he has to be, like... This game. Takes it more seriously. If people are watching, don't know this. Uh, Dooku is was Yoda's old apprentice. or Yoda was was his master. Yeah, he was his old apprentice. Right. Yeah. Like Yoda trained Dooku. But yeah, that's all. I, I'm throwing. I think it's better than the previous one, so I have to put it higher. So I'm gonna put it in B tier. I am also gonna do B tier. It's very quick. Uh, there's not a whole lot of emotional stakes here or anything. Um, it's very new, though. Stuff we haven't seen before. Um, uh, Aaron, did you have anything to add to that? No, not really. I mean, yeah, really not a whole lot to say. As a kid, <laughs> I remember as a kid, I really liked this fight. Oh, yeah. As a kid, the this last shit was... time I rewatched it, 
I was like, damn, this shit's really boring, man. Like, this is... <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot going on. Yoda's kind of just flying in circles around Dooku, and then they occasionally clash, clash sabers. So yeah, you know, Yoda is fine and sees B, a lot of energy. Like, it's fine in B or even at the very top of C, but B sounds good for now, I guess. Sweet. It's definitely better than the last two that we talked about. <laughs> yeah. And C, that is. Okay. All right. So, next one, the... the first fight of the Revenge of the Sith is Obi Wan and Anakin versus Count Dooku. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this lady. fight. Um, this fight is very different. Obviously, it's a rematch of. Uh, episode two's battle and it goes very differently we see a much more experienced anakin uh he has the same amount of confidence but you can tell it's a very different type of confidence he was very rash and reckless in episode two and this he's much more calm much more reserved you can see that side of him that's like been through war and knows his own capabilities and knows not to uh underestimate <clears throat> clone wars count dooku <laughs> uh yes <laughs> exactly um obi-wan kind of just gets his ass kicked um, i don't know <laughs> he must have been like sick or something <laughs> for, for <laughs> he real. just got smoked um Wrote a tummy ache. but i understand that's that was uh he, he the point just... of the fight was to see anakin and dooku yes so they had to get yes. rid of obi-wan somehow they had to get rid of obi-wan just yeah so that in and of itself is kind of besides the point. This is basically Anakin versus Dooku, and it's very cool to see Anakin kind of just walk through this fight. Very different Anakin that we've seen before. Um, and just smoke him. And not to mention at the very end, we see, you know, a he very integral, integral, yeah, um, decision by Anakin <clears throat> to kill Dooku, which sets up the plot for this movie at the, from the very beginning at a very, you know, Excuse me. good, in a very good way. Um, this is a really good fight. It's not do it, do like it. anything crazy. It's not a super long fight or anything, but it's do good. It. And I'm Ooh. thinking high B, low A. I have an A just because I, I like it a lot more than Yoda versus Dooku. Um, yeah, I do too. And if I were to put it in B, I would just put Yoda and Dooku in C. So, yeah, that's a good point. I'm gonna put it in I A think I'm and then go just A as well. Keep moving it to the bottom of A, probably. But I do really like the fight, and I like the anytime... dialogue between Anakin and, and Dooku. Yeah, that too. And they're fighting. And anytime you get cool. to see Hayden Christensen wield a lightsaber in his prime, it's just I love <laughs> watching that. He did a great job. Yeah, with the choreography yeah, in this exactly. film, he lo- he's really excellent. into the character. I uh. Yeah, it's crazy seeing Dooku die too at this point as well. If yeah, you, like especially know, after right? all the times they fought in the Clone Wars, it's like, oh, right, he finally won. What the hell? It's crazy. I will say, yeah. if you if you time. watch the Clone Wars and and then you go right into this movie, like you might feel a little bit cheated, like, oh, that's it, like Dooku just died like that. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, so I understand that, feeling, but... that point of view, but obviously when this movie was made, that wasn't really the. There was no way of knowing that that would be the case. Mm-hmm. He did say his powers doubled since the last time they met. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, when That's was the last probably... time they met in the Clone Wars? I don't. I don't remember. Maybe they created some space to help justify that line. But I don't know. I think they only fought that in the movie. No, I could be wrong. Well, no, they Maybe fight in the Clone Wars like a ton. Yeah, but, him and Obi Wan and Anakin fight. Dude, but maybe the last couple seasons fight. they haven't. I don't. I don't remember any fights between them the last like couple seasons. Yeah, they probably spaced it out for that reason because I know they were very conscious about that. Like they made sure Anakin did not meet General Grievous because of that one line in the Revenge of the Sith. You're taller yeah. than I expected, or shorter. My bad. You're yeah. shorter than I expected. I'm gonna pull out my theory, my Star Wars theory, Anakin Skywalker impression. <laughs> yeah. It's a one-to-one impression. Sounds exactly like him. So <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> I'm going to actually move the Yoda and Duke fight back down to C tier. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's better than the other two, but it's not good enough to go up because I, 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 this needs to go in B tier for me. B tier? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. The one we just talked about. <laughs> yeah, this might be one I'm changed. I changed on to, but. 
uh, I like that's how I'm feeling. I, I think it. I think it. It's very necessary for the story because this is the first time, and the only time you see Anakin fight with his lightsaber until he fights Obi Wan at the end of the movie. It is a so big this is deal the first too. Time you see the new and improved Anakin in the movies. At least. Yeah, you're right. Suddenly and he's got a blue lightsaber. It's a big deal too because um, Dooku's not out of the way, which is what Palpatine wanted. Right. Right. Uh, so story wise, it's actually a really important fight. Not only is Dooku out of the way, but Palpatine had him removed in the best way. Yeah. Yeah, it was it worked actually out perfectly for Palpatine. For Why did Dooku yeah. not say anything? We'll never know. But hey, stunned, it worked out for bro. Palpatine. He was stunned. I would have been he stunned was too. Flabbergasted. He's like, like wait, the fuck? I was like, you know, he's the Sith Lord. <laughs> he was like, yeah, wait. yeah. <laughs> Just imagine. He at least like, said, like, damn. master. <laughs> he probably was. You know what I mean? On his way, but he was, he was shocked, bro. He was like, "What the fuck?" He was shocked, on? yeah. Also, that too, fun fact: expected. for like the really hardcore Star Wars nerds, Dooku mm-hmm. was elitist. Everyone knows this, but he was like, he was against um, robotic parts. He was saying like, if you had to get robotic uh, limbs, then like you weren't as good of a duelist or something like that, uh, because you like lost, and now you have to have this handicap thing to like make up for your failures. And seeing Dooku's right. hands go off, it's like, oh my goodness, like, he would have had to get robotic hands, and he would have been, like, a hypocrite. Yeah. But he died anyway, so. That's interesting. I didn't even know that. It's a fun little fact toy. <laughs> little, little Star Wars fact. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I, I might move so, later. I'm going to keep it in a beach here for now. We'll I see where the other ones go. On to the next Revenge of the Sith battle, which is Obi-Wan versus Grievous. I believe it's Aaron. It's your turn. If you would like to sure. take this one. Um... So, in terms of dueling, we don't really see a whole lot. We just see Obi-Wan cut off <laughs> two of his hands, and then <laughs> Grievous runs away. He says hello yeah, there. But yeah, it's infamous, you know. Well, not infamous, but it's famous. It's very the music famous, is good. very iconic. The music's very fun, very energetic. Doesn't yes. The music almost, like, contradicts the stakes <laughs> that are there. Because it's like yeah. very uplifting, very cheerful music. It's like, da 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 it's, like, it's a very okay, conflicting okay. Like, part of the movie. I can get jivey with this shit, but they're like fighting for the state of the war right now. There's no more Dooku. You know, it's just Grievous. He's gone into hiding. <laughs> and he's got this cheerful ass music. But, I mean, it's fun and it's really cool to see Grievous, you know, show off that he has four arms and he's using Jedi lightsabers. It's a very very unique fight very unique character because you know when we saw grievous earlier he had two arms and he has all these jedi lightsabers and you're like what the fuck why does he have yeah. all of those and then suddenly he's got four arms and he's using those damn jedi lightsabers and it's cool to see grievous like it's he's scary he's huge he's strong yeah. he like punches obi-wan and moves him like 20 feet back type shit um but it's nothing special out well it's special but it's nothing you know it's not very magical it's not like a whole lot of there's not enough real 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 fighting to i think rank it higher than say like a low b high c i think i'm gonna put it in b because the fight from start to finish is excellent but the dueling which is clearly what this is you know this whole tier list is based off of is very lackluster. So. Yeah, I put mine in B too. It makes sense. But it's an excellent fight. I'm going to put it above Dooku and Yoda though. What was that line that Grievous said? He's like, I was training your Jedi arts by Count Dooku. And everyone's like, yes, yes, we fought many times in the Clone Wars. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> Guys, I think I'm going to move Obi-Wan or not Obi-Wan. Yoda and Dooku down to the very top of C tier. And then I'm gonna. That's what I did. Put, put um Obi Wan, Grievous, and B, and then I'm gonna leave Anakin and Dooku in A. Yeah, Yoda and Dooku feels like a high C. I agree. Yeah. That's kind of where I was going when I spoke about it a little bit. It's just, it's just boring almost. This is a else. crazy fight because like, Dooku's gone, so Joan Grievous is you know is basically now leader of everything. That's right. And I mean, like, yeah, Grievous dies too. So it's like they both die like. One after another, it's I mean, crazy. They win the war essentially, right there. Like, 
yeah, as far if, as they know, you know. They, 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 they would have won if it was for that little plot twist. <laughs> yeah, it's why they sent Obi-Wan to Utapau. Remember, like, when Anakin and Obi-Wan said bye to each other? People were like, what if Obi-Wan never left? It's like Yeah, this is where Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Anakin all split up. And yeah. they don't see each other till the end. Well, I guess Ahsoka yeah. doesn't see them at all, but... It's crazy because that decision was, like, unbeknownst to them, the best, the worst decision, but beknownst to them, the best decision they could have made. Send Obi-Wan to go take out Grievous after Anakin yeah. just took out Dooku. Yeah, like, it's that's perfect. That's the best I mean, decision they could have made. Like, it's such a just I mean, and it worked. decision that <laughs> it nobody worked. could have, you know, predicted that Palpatine would have... Let's just say they order sixty six. They should have listened to Fives, man. The Fives told him he yes, figured it out. Let's just say they got Fives played like a piccolo the whole time. They did. On okay, you guys ready for uh, Mace Windu versus Emperor Palpatine? Ah, oh, okay. So yes. it's my turn to lead, right? Yes. Sir. Well, I got a good one. Um, a good fight. So uh, to clear some stuff up in the beginning. Some people are wondering why a badass like Kefisto died so easily. It's sad. Because he's trash. But Cause he's trash. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he is a hardcore badass in the Clone Wars. And these are like Grandmaster. Not Grandmaster. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mace Windu is a Grandmaster. The other three are Jedi Palpatine's Masters god, on the council. Uh, it shows the it goes to show. Things. Yeah. It goes to show how powerful Palpatine is. Also, too, yeah. he used the Force ability called Force Scream, apparently. I think that's the reason. <laughs> which is a way to like shock their opponents. And they just never experienced such power before. The only reason why Mace right. Windu was able to do this, one, he's very powerful and skilled, but um, his fighting style called Vapad, which is a redirects that energy back onto the opponent, which helped, form I think, six, protect right? him. Um, I think it's the form he made up. Um, it might be Form 6. Uh, I don't remember, though. But that's a big reason why he was able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Is He actually does use the dark side, just doesn't hold on to it. He lets it right. channel through. Um, also, too, Mace Windu likes fighting. Like that's what his character point too. Like he studied combat a lot. Um, all that said, I think it's a great fight. Things are very high stakes here. Um, you know, Count Dooku gets defeated. Joan Grievous gets defeated. All they have left is the mysterious Sith Lord that they find out is the Senate. <laughs> right. And Mace Windu wins. He wins fair and square, uh, which is crazy. Um, yeah. And if it wasn't for Anakin really like so much. intervening. Uh, Sidious would have lost and everything would have been fine. But uh, Anakin uh, was emotional and it was Mace Windu's fault. Uh, <laughs> he did not like him. <laughs> yeah, and all the other Jedi yeah. on the council. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't enough. His skill wasn't enough, you know, because they Jedi were corrupt and all that. Overall, I think it's a great fight. Choreography is also awesome, obviously. Um, it's lots of fun to watch. Uh, it's it's really one of the most fun and entertaining fights in the whole series, I, if I remember correctly. And what I like so much about it is like what you said, he won fair and square. Like there was nothing that was in his favor. He won fair and fucking square, and that's just yeah. so cool. The most powerful I Sith, <clears throat> you know, considerably one of the most powerful Sith ever, just gets smoked by by a. Uh, Windu. I just think that's I, I, yeah. almost... Uh, it just goes to show like how powerful Windu is. Yeah. It's I gotta say, yeah. like, this is what's called an upset. Um, yeah, for real. Like, a Mace what? Windu, like, an upset, like, it's when the underdog wins. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, you go into this fight, you know, everyone and their mother is thinking, like, you know, the lord of the sith the, the sith lord you know the guy that has been hiding behind the facade of you know the senate in plain sight of the jedi order this whole time like of course he's gonna whoop all their asses like he is the senate he is the sith lord like he's gonna he's the emperor you know um i know me as a kid i i was always shocked every time i watched it every time i went back to it like dang mace windu really beat him um, I think that's a big part of the appeal to this fight. And like William was saying, you really get to see in the Clone Wars that Mace Windu is, he kind of lives for this sort of thing. Like this is his, this is his uh, skill set as a Jedi. This is his specialty. This is why he's, um, you know, Grandmaster along with Yoda almost. 
Right. Like co- combat like this is what he thrives for. So he's kind of almost he, like Anakin, but he doesn't give into the dark side. He's right, Anakin loves yeah, combat he, too. He taps into it. Right. Exactly. That's what J Pad does, right? Um But I was gonna say too, I, I I I think Palpatine underestimated Mace Windu a little bit too, for sure. I think so as well. Yeah. Like because Palpatine looks down his nose at Jedi like Mace Windu and Yoda, as you can see later on. But uh, especially considering what happens in the Yoda versus Palpatine fight, I think it's very impressive that Mace takes down Palpatine. And like William was saying, the stakes are all there. I'm going to put this in a high A above Anakin versus Count Dooku. I want to specify something, too, just so people are aware. In the written book um, for Star Wars 3, uh, which isn't canon, um, is it does say in there that Palpatine knew Anakin was coming and therefore basically purposely lost the fight. Um, timing it so when Anakin arrives, it looks like uh, the Jedi are trying to take over. But that's not true. Um, George Lucas uh, said... Mace Windu won fair and square in that fight. Right, okay, that's what I thought. What George like says goes. What George says goes. Um, A or S tier? Um, I, I think uh, I'm. I'm going high. I want to put it in S tier. Yeah. I think I one really high A too. I don't think there's enough like material for it to be an S tier. Yeah, what I, I agree. like about the fight though is that there's not a lot of like, it, you know, in this movie pretty much all the fights has cuts to other scenes in between fights this one doesn't have a whole lot of those i think it does that like once or twice yeah the rest is just kind of like raw footage you know they're fighting that's which is really cool um right it is cool yeah i I wish we'd see more of this in disney star wars (laughs) so uh the next one is anakin versus obi-wan Oh, it's not um, Yoda versus... Uh... Oh, you're right, actually. They do start yeah, first, I think. They start first. Yeah. Somehow. Um... Somehow Yoda takes his sweet time getting to Palpatine. Because he's on course on already. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> but, um... He's old. Yeah, he, had, he had to walk you there, know. you know. Yeah, exactly. As you can see, when he walks in, it's like the one mi- half a mile an hour, so... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, though, what hasn't been said about this fight? We don't have to spend too much time on it. It's amazing. Uh, the choreography is absolutely S-tier. amazing. You see, it's an immediate S tier, obviously. Yeah. Um, you see the the just that each one of these brothers really just know the ins and outs of the other. They've fought side by side for so long. They you know, know all the quirks. You see that so well uh, with the choreography and all the different things that happen in this fight. Um, not to mention the emotion is just at an all-time high in the entire series with another absolutely incredible performance by John Williams uh, when it comes to the uh, music. But, there have been yeah, times. It says everything. Um the choreography, if you see the behind the scenes of these two guys working on this, like they trained so hard for this, you can see it. There's nothing like these prequel fights, and this is the epitome of uh, all of that emotionally, you know, choreography, all that stuff. Right. You want to add anything, Aaron? Uh, I was going to say there have been times where I prefer the, the, um, music during this fight to duel of the fates there have been times where i'm like holy shit this is like yeah this is both really good yeah and i i'd like to point out that they are fighting within you know i don't know millimeters inches to lava yeah molten rock i think that you know really adds to the fight <laughs> the fact that they are both capable of this huge exertion of stamina next to such a extraordinarily you know extreme circumstances 
Not to mention right. one there when they're in the control room, they shut off all the shields. So everything starts to just go fucking ballistic. And uh, it's just impressive. It's really cool. And sometimes when there's like a break between them dueling, because it's like, oh shit, we have to avoid burning up. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. both start, they're like, oh, hold on. Let's run away from the lava. Right. It's kind of cool to have that, that little addition. Yeah, it's very well done. The setting is is huge. It's, um, uh, can I add a few things there? Are you done? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I like seeing Anakin. Anakin's different in this fight. He's he's tapping into his power, and he's way more mm-hmm. aggressive, which I thought was kind of cool to see. Um, mm-hmm. And then Obi-Wan is kind of the same. He knows Anakin, so he's able to fight him. Uh, obviously, Obi-Wan shouldn't have won this fight, but because of Anakin's overconfidence, he lost. Mm-hmm. Um, and Darth Sidious was very upset about that. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Obi-Wan's... Even though Anakin's more powerful, Obi-Wan has better ma- better control over the Force, which I think helped him a lot. Right. He knew to be conservative. Mm-hmm. It was kind of neat seeing move sets be used. Like, Anakin tried to mo- same move he used on Count Dooku to have his hands on Obi-Wan, but Obi-Wan countered right. it because he knew he was going to do it. There's a lot of small things like that in the fight. The Obi-Wan. Uh, so good. <laughs> like, so there's, good. There, there's <laughs> thought into these fights, which I love that George Lucas put just as much time into like the other stuff as he did in in the fighting is like mm-hmm. the fighting itself is his own story and character development um unlike in the newer stuff uh there's so much more thought that goes into the these uh these fight scenes right and i love it it's really cool even if dialogue i totally cool. agree only a sith thinks in absolutes <laughs> but, i i i don't even care that. Right? That, that doesn't bother me at all he's right people Siths think do that. think in absolutes Right. The Jedi kind of do too, but <laughs> the Sith do it more. Yeah, yeah. absolutes is Obi Wan was really just Obi Wan was just. I love that quote. He was in like, he was obviously confused and also hurt too and broken that the Jedi, you know, had this fight had failed. Yeah, and this fight is so much more emotional. If you watch Clone Wars, they actually released a Clone Wars version of this fight, a fan made one, and it's almost hits more just because. You know, you're looking at the animated characters that you attach to and during the Clone Wars. Uh, at least for me, I know not for everybody. But mm. uh, with the Clone Wars, this fight's even so much more depressing and sad. Mm. So it's a right. huge emotional think, journey uh, if you're heart, like a huge Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. I think a big theme here is that the Clone Wars ties everything together. Yeah, <laughs> it does. If you skip, don't skip the Clone Wars if you're watching Star Wars, please. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's twice really as good cool. if you watch the Clone Wars with it. I will say though, this fight and this whole movie in general holds up without the Clone Wars, in my opinion. It does. Yeah, it's just strengthened, strengthened with the Clone Wars heavily. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just yeah, you can see Obi Wan's hanging on by the skin of his teeth the entire time. Anakin is just overwhelming him with this strength and power and skill and rage and obi-wan is just like barely Obi-Wan, able to hang on until the very end uh, Obi-Wan won the battle of wits is what it was so only reason he, he stayed won. vigilant he could have he could have just cracked at any moment and anakin would have taken advantage of it and killed him on the spot but obi-wan knew his the stakes of what he was doing and he knew if he failed like it's over for the galaxy like he clutched up. Kinda, you know what's words. crazy? Obi Wan volunteered to go fight Sidious <laughs> before this fight. Obi Wan's a fucking like, legend. No. <laughs> he is a saint. He's the he's he the he's saint. He's a, everything a Jedi should be. Obi Wan. I want to say one more thing. I'm 100 percent sure if anyone else in the Star Wars universe went to go take down Anakin at this point in his in the series, <laughs> they would just get have gotten smoked. They would not have been able to stop him. Anakin is an all-time high right now. Obi Wan's the only one that would have had a chance at stopping him. Yeah, I agree. I think at this point, Anakin could probably have even almost beat Sidious. Well, that was I'm his sure plan, I think. He was wanting to try to kill yeah. Sidious shortly after this. Yeah, I mean, we even know in um, as Vader, he's 
almost capable of defeating Sidious, which is why Sidious withholds him of his yes. upgraded suit. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So to think of what Anakin would be capable of without all these prosthetics and wires and life support, mm-hmm. <laughs> he would have been able to smoke a Palpatine way sooner. Right. Alrighty. Yeah. Um, Aaron, well, you, you led that one right, I think. So it's your turn, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, Yoda, Yoda versus Palpatine, huh? Okay. I I like this fight, but the next the the most recent time watching it, I've realized that it very quickly turns into just like who can get the high ground more and who can throw the <laughs> most seats at each other. <laughs> Which you know, it it's it's very practical. It's very realistic. Uh, but it's not exactly what we wanted to see between Yoda and Palpatine, which I think that if Yoda wasn't just a small little guy, you know, and he didn't fall down at the end, he would have beat Palpatine. Like, he already was beating Palpatine, and then Palpatine starts throwing these, you know, vast amounts of fucking chairs at him, and Yoda just gets overwhelmed. He was just, you know, a little bit... A little bit of bad luck, I feel like. Of what his... Yeah. Uh, what he was capable of holding on to. Yeah. A little bit of bad luck for sure, because that's such a... He's already at a disadvantage in that room being so tiny, you know? Mm-hmm. And that room is so giant. And it was, already, you know, it was just such a perfect storm for Palpatine to win that. Right. But I, I know if Palpatine just got away with by the skin of his teeth twice in this fucking movie. One of the times, <laughs> yeah. because Anakin comes in and saves the day. This time, because Yoda's like, fuck, dude, I can't do this. Yoda's just kind of... <laughs> Also, <laughs> I want to add, um, yeah. Anakin, I mean, not Anakin, what the fuck, um, Palpatine is at an all-time high right now, mentally, he, he just recruited Anakin, his plan is working perfectly, he just overthrew the Jedi, he's very confident, and, um, Yoda has just watched his entire life crumble I, I was just gonna feet. say that as well. Yeah. The emotional charge for Yoda. Yeah, there's definitely morale playing at this. Very heavy. And and Yoda's old. Like, don't forget, like for a for a, whatever his species is called, like they only live, you know, he he dies like forty years after this. Or it's more like thirty, twenty five years after this. I don't think we like, know he's what old. the race is called. <laughs> like he's tired. He's old. He's just defeated at this point. And this was a hundred years yeah. earlier. Yoda would have easily beat him. Yeah. And if the circumstances were different, if the Jedi Order hadn't just fallen on Because Yoda thing. goes here Yoda. to make up for himself. He goes here to, like, okay, I, because Yoda recognizes he messed up. Like, he, mm-hmm. he, he understands probably what Count Dooku and Qui-Gon Jinn were like, why they right. were skeptical. It's like, oh my goodness, they were right. So he wants to right his wrong, but he fails. Mm-hmm. Why exactly. he goes into hiding. Into hiding, I must go. Isn't that what he, he also. Says? This fight almost becomes more of a battle of force power, too. Like, Obi-Wan and Anakin is a battle of, like, swordsmanship. Yoda mm-hmm. and Palpatine have a much greater mastery over the force than Obi-Wan and Anakin do. And you see that, right. too. Like, Anakin walks, Yoda walks in the room, and he waves his hand, takes out yeah. the two guards. And he also exactly. uses the force power to, like, clam on to Sidious as he flies back. He's like, ugh. Right. <laughs> I think, um, yeah. technically, I think Palpatine tries to run away because he leaps to the door and Yoda jumps in front exactly. of him. He's like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. And then he has to fight him. Yeah, I think Palpatine was like, fuck, man. Do I really have to do this right now? Yeah. Because I think Palpatine was aware. Like, my like, skin still hurts. My, I'm all wrinkly from lightning yeah. myself. <laughs> like, come on, man. I think, I, think if Pal- I think Palpatine realized that if he didn't play this <laughs> extremely smart, then That's why he, he probably did that. Why he, he gave the terrain advantage. Lose. Gave himself a training yeah, advantage, I, like you were saying. Exactly. That's exactly why I think Yoda would have won if it was like any under any other circumstance. But yeah, I can get behind very that. Very smart and very cunning, and he he. Uh, yes. Which sucks, man, because it's it's like you got to think about Yoda leaves this day having it's failed. so sad, he feels, he feels so know, defeated, it's depressing. Like they were and so close to, to to winning this to war. <laughs> so exactly. close. He goes to Kashyyyk Guys. and... Yeah, go on here. Yeah. I was just going to say, he goes to Kashyyyk and sees all the dead Wookiees, and he's just, like, even more fucked after that. Mm-hmm. It's just a a really sad day for Yoda. 
Man, there's so much to these fights to dissect. I love it. I know, right? I'll say this right now. The sequel fights are not this deep. <laughs> these are so much better. <laughs> yeah, we won't spend a lot of time on that. I just one, realized so the Ray and Kylo Ren fight yeah. versus all the, like, the... Uh, oh, I guess that's not a lightsaber fight, though. So that's why it's not in here. Wait. Where they fight all the Red Royal Guards. Oh, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that shit was I just realized fire. they were on the same side during that fight. Um, uh, was there no oh, yeah. lightsaber fight? In just the... last thing before we move on. Yeah. All I gotta say is... Thank God for Luke Skywalker, bro. Because he really is the new hope. He comes in class. He is, yeah. He is the the only one left to restore balance to the galaxy. So what do you guys think in low A, high B? I'm I put it on A. a. I, yeah. I put it, I, I had it in B, but I'll put it in A. It just yeah, kind of feels more like, uh, like if we're, if we're boiling it down to lightsabers only, there's not a whole lot going on. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. So that's why but I, I put it in B. But but the stakes and the the how much you can read into this fight is just too good. Yeah, I, yeah. You gotta, you gotta put I, it. I there. agree. I'll put it in A just because the storyboard is just too packed, too full, right. too you know passionate. Right. All right, as you guys can see, we added a couple new fights. Uh, we kind of realized that we had a couple fights from Rebels, but none from the Clone Wars. So we just went through and added some that we thought were the best. We also added uh, Obi Wan versus Vader because can't really can't really leave that one out. Kind of needs to be talked about. Um, and then we added a couple from the sequels as well. So uh, yeah, we're all set. And then let's get into Rebels now. Uh, William, you want to kick us off with uh, Kanan versus Vader, yeah. I believe? Yeah, already. So, quite an eventful fight. Basically, they clash lightsabers a few times and run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, man, that's a pretty yeah, it was, intense. There's nothing to say about it. Like, it's basically just to show that Darth Vader's better than them. <laughs> yeah. There's, I don't... I'm throwing a D tier because it really wasn't even a fight. It's cool. I'm going to compared do Compared to everything else, yeah. it's just, you know, I'm not hating on it. I mean, is his... it really cool? Not really, but <laughs> it's like yeah. it's basically the Qui Gon versus Darth Maul fight, but worse. So that's why it's yeah. Here. Yeah. So uh, I'm throwing in. I don't know about you guys, uh, but I find live action fights to be much more mesmerizing. So it takes I, a really I good agree. animated. It takes a really good animated fight to like get me uh, get me really hyped Bumped. about it. Yeah, I feel that. Um. That being said, there are plenty of those good animated fights on this list. So yeah, Aaron. Alrighty, uh, Soka versus one. Vader. That's just, that's not me. That's you. Um. Skip. You're after. Oh, one. it is. You're right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just I just recently rewatched this fight and I actually really really liked it. Uh, I think I speak for the guys as well that. Just the emotional stakes are there, uh, like with a lot of these fights. Um, obviously, you see Ahsoka meeting with quote-unquote Anakin or Darth Vader for the first time since he fell. Uh, pretty intense emotional scene. Some good combat, too, especially for Rebels, which isn't necessarily known for having the good, best animations. <laughs> uh, good animation or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, really good stuff like when uh his his mask breaks and you hear uh the voice of uh anakin combined with the voice of vader it just takes ahsoka like off guard almost gets her killed like really good stuff i like this fight a lot um so how does uh, how does ahsoka think... know that vader is anakin doing she hits off his she mask. finds out okay so that's she the find... first time she ever finds out I thought she found out in Clone Wars, or or did she not? No, she has yeah. suspicion she like in that. Rebels, uh, but she isn't confirmed until that happens. Right. Okay. She's in wow. denial. That makes it even happens. more. Yeah. yeah makes, it makes it even, even more better. good. She's I think like, I'm gonna put it at the very top of A tier, like the very top, above yeah. all the other A tiers. I'm thinking it's A tier as well. 
I almost put an S tier, but I don't think it's quite S tier. The emotional stakes yeah, are same. there, but the like another factor for me in the rating is obviously like the fight itself. Like how cool is the fight? Uh, right. right. It's more just emotional. Um, right. So I think A tier is the, the place for it to go. I'm actually gonna move it. Mm, keep it in A tier. I just don't know where I want to have it in A tier. But I'm gonna just put it here in A tier for now. I'm gonna have it up at the top, either above or behind. Uh... Uh, Mace and Sidious. I think those two are very sim- are very close, in my close. opinion. Yeah. All right, ready for the next one? Now, Alrighty. yeah, next one. Here we are. Is it the big one? Obi versus Maul, right? Yeah. Okay. Obi versus Maul. Hit it off, Aaron. So yes, this fight is very long, very drawn out, <laughs> very exciting. Um, no, this fight is like one move on each on each <laughs> behalf but this the symbolism of the fight is what makes the fight like worthy to, of being talked about right as i think william said before we were recording um darth maul attempts to use the same thing he did to qui-gon hit him in the head and Obi-Wan's like, ah, 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 and cuts his lightsaber in half and then stabs Maul, right? Yeah. Wanna... This fight, is very, I see it more cool. as like a and doesn't gun like... Western showdown, you know? Exactly, yeah. And you see Obi-Wan switch forms at the very beginning because he's like, okay, like, yeah. I need to be more prepared for this, which is very cool. There's a lot more symbolism in this fight and, and uh, chirality to the first fight of those these two as opposed to the actual yeah. fight itself for that i think i want to put it in b tier because it ha- it's one of the most excuse me i just burped over the microphone uh but it's one of the most symbolic um fights in 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 deep but it lasts about you know 10 <laughs> seconds maybe maybe 5 seconds Hey, where are you putting um, it again? Aaron's putting it in B tier. I'm thinking... Honestly, the emotion is, is so intense. I know, uh, I almost want to put sim- it in A tier. The symbolism is is so intense. Uh, I just love seeing this obviously grown and very wise version of Obi-Wan facing a, a ghost from his past. Uh, and kind of just being that final nail of like, Obi-Wan has figured this guy out long, long ago. And uh, he he has let bygones be bygones. He's forgiven Maul for what he's done, for killing his master, and for seeking this revenge upon him since you know what twenty years now, um, if not more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just a a great great moment. You can see <clears throat> Maul has at the end has kind of like reached his end, and he is acceptant of that. So I'm gonna put it in A tier. Uh, uh, I, I'm I'm feeling a good A tier. Like, obviously, the the fighting is not there, but it's a really, really, really good sim symbolic part of Star Wars that I really mm-hmm. like. It just it happens to involve lightsabers. So, so I'm gonna put an A tier for that reason. Obviously, it's at a disadvantage with its combat. It doesn't have any of that, but I feel like it gets an exception. I want to give my take on this um, before I say something though. Uh, recording check. You guys, recording audio is still there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, yes. All good. Okay, cool. Good call. I don't know why. Uh, I think one of you guys forgot to hit play last time, and it just went through. That was me. I figured I should just yeah. do a reminder just in case. <laughs> that's that's smart. <laughs> um, I think it's an S tier fight. Part of the reason why I think it's what makes it so good is because it is short. Um, and it's short in a good way because of like the mastery between both of them, uh, and also to the. The stakes, right? So the motions there, mm-hmm. like guys talked about. Um, Maul, for people that haven't really seen this fight, Maul doesn't really know why Obi Wan's there. He's like, "Why the hell are you on Tatooine?" <laughs> right? But he figures <laughs> out they like, just so, happen to run into each other. Like the fuck? I don't even remember how they end up. I don't know how Maul ends up yeah, fighting him. It's kind but, of weird because they just seem to be in the middle of the goddamn desert. Like it doesn't seem like <laughs> there's any special reason for them to be meeting. You know what I mean? Right. Maul finds him somehow. I don't remember how. Um, but he finds out he's protecting Luke Skywalker, basically, right? Somebody. And right. at that point, 
because Obi-Wan doesn't care about Maul at this point. He's just kind of like dismissing him. He's like, whatever, go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> because at this point, Obi Wan's Obi Wan's like the most powerful Jedi like ever at this point. Um, but it's not until Maul finds out that he wants to take out Luke where Obi Wan's like, oh, okay, this is serious. I need to kill him. Yeah. Um, he goes to Form Three stance. Uh, right. I think it's Form Three. His default stance. Uh, Maul so. picks a defensive stance. Right. So Obi Wan switches to his master's stance, uh, form four, um, and Maul responds to that by switching to a more offensive. I don't know what the hell what form Maul does, but he has his own like thing. But he switches to an offensive attack. Now I think, to me, Obi Wan did this on purpose. He wanted to bait Maul into pulling off the same trick uh, they tried to do on Qui Gon, which is why he initiated to begin with. Um, and it worked. The bait worked. He blocks both attacks very easily and cuts him down the middle and kills him. There's such a level of mastery uh, displayed in the art of comp, like the art of lightsabers in this fight that doesn't need to be long and drawn out. He's super good. He doesn't need a lot of lot of moves anymore. And then, of course, at the end of this, Obi Wan does forgive Maul, uh, which is like very cool. At least I think he does. Uh, yeah. So all all that's why I think it's an S tier. Hopefully, I explained that well enough. I. I, I think that's all why it's a nest here. Yeah. I would, I would, uh, I mean, so here's the thing, guys. The only reason I put it in B tier is because it lasted like a second. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think it's a nest tier, though. I give it an exception. So I think I'm going to have to switch words, S tier. <laughs> abide by that as well. Yeah, I'm going to leave mine in cool. A tier. Just... I'm glad I changed your mind a little bit. <laughs> so this goes to show five star. Well, I'm putting it in an A tier. Um, okay. This just goes to show fights don't need to be super long and drawn out as long as, you know, they're still good, right? Like, this was still right. good. Like, it yes. follows the I Star Wars say- system and the lightsaber combat, like, and I think it's perfect. <laughs> Here's the thing. If I'm comparing it to my other A tiers, I like it more than all of them. But if I'm comparing it to my S tiers, it's like, it just isn't the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it kind of is. No, I totally get the same. you. I kind of get you. No, no, yeah. no. Here's the thing, though. But it is the same. Like to me, it is. Yeah. To me, I, I think it's on the same like level so much, as the S tier ones. What we like so much about Anakin and Obi Wan fighting is that is the choreography, the emotions, and the you know the, the meaning behind it. The, what we like so much about Darth Maul versus Qui Gon and and Obi Wan is the same reasons: the choreography, the the emotions, and the meaning behind it. And the, this fight has all three of those as well to the same standard. It's just, you know, just short, yeah, quick. So, correct. I definitely, yeah. Let's let's move on though. Um. All right. It's, so it's a spectacular yeah. S tier William. He gave you his reasons. I'm gonna keep mine a a tier. Just uh, yeah. I'm ready to move on. Uh. Me too. So, so I think we should go back to the Clone Wars now and kind of like get that. Yeah, let's get these Clone done. Wars done. Work. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. if you guys want to go, here? let me know which which one was first. Was it Count Dooku versus uh, Soka versus Maul? Uh, no, I believe, was, um, I believe it was. I believe it was Maul and Savage versus Obi Wan that was first, and then Dooku. Yeah. yeah like, then it's know. then it's Maul versus Sidious. Savage and Sidious. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. it's a so it's my turn? your turn, William. Uh, Maul and Savage versus Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, man, this is kind of a hard one to exp- I, I, I almost want to put it in A tier. I'm juggling between A and B yeah. tier. It's like it's a mm-hmm. great fight. It's like one of the first. I think this is the basically the first one where um Obi Wan ends up beating Maul. Maybe it's the second fight. Uh, I think it's the first time he even sees that Maul's alive. And they I think you're he right. Sees Savage as well because he's with that other him. Jedi and they kill her. Uh, uh, Savage yep. kills her pretty quickly with the mm-hmm. headbutt <laughs> to, to the belly. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're like, yeah, that's crazy. The headbutt to the belly is wild. Um, but, uh, wasn't there like some sort of discourse on uh, Dathomir? Dathomir? So they win. Yeah. Boom. Well, like, I'm just trying to find because I've never watched this fight and being super amazed by it. Like, those are so cool. It's so epic and so dramatic. Obviously, no, Obi-Wan's not going to die. And what's cool about this fight is Obi-Wan actually ends up winning. He does 
uh, end up beating uh, Savage and Maul here. Kind of showing yeah. him that he's not gotten better than him, even with his friend. But I don't know. It's yeah. a cool fight. Uh, I don't really have anything else to, to say on it. Obi um, Obi Wan just here. just owns like a plot of real estate in Maul's head. I think that's what we're all yeah, we all I, figure I think out that's, right here. I agree. And I'm gonna put it in B tier. Yeah. Basically, to summarize, it's a fun fight. Um, it's fun to watch, and yeah, it's cool seeing Maul one try to kill Obi Wan again. So B tier. What I think. It, I think it's what, what I like a lot about this fight is that Obi Wan's like pushed up against the, the the ropes you know what i mean like he's outnumbered he's in shock and there's a second one too and he yeah he still it's manages cool. to defeat both of them and he cuts off savage's arm which is very cool yeah i think it's very neat to see that and it shows it shows a level of like uh, already shows a level of mastery in obi-wan's you know uh coolness do you know what i mean yeah something cool. else i like about it too is you actually see like obi-wan stressing like he's having to fight really exactly. hard to get out of this that's what i mean he's by pushed his to his limit coolness. which is also like really really cool you never see that he's exactly dude he's very stressed but he stays like calm and he stays with it you, you actually I mean? see obi-wan kind of struggle maul's whole arc in the clone wars you, you see obi-wan kind of struggle a little bit with the dark side i think like he he really does want to like sometimes kill them all in the act of revenge especially after he kills duchess it's yeah team. exactly so yeah, it's I was just all really cool. that up. once duchess dies you see, you really see that obi-wan's like bring him all back the he's, thing, not decision. he's not going to falter and the thing i love so much about obi-wan is just that he holds fast and that just shows the exactly. great qualities of being a, a jedi is he, he's what a jedi should be at the end of the day he's enduring mm -hmm. um are you guys ready to move on now i am yeah don't want to here all right, uh, so Maul, Maul and Obi Wan, <laughs> or uh, sorry, Maul and Palpatine versus no, or, uh, Dooku versus whatever. Aventress. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in D tier, and then I'm gonna do uh, the other one, unless you guys have anything to say. <laughs> I do have something to say about this. Um, I'm putting it ahead. in C tier. Okay, I think it's yeah, pretty I'm cool. Yeah, I'm putting it in C tier. <laughs> it's a very exciting fight. I remember when I was watching the Clone Wars recently, you know, somewhat recently, within the, within the past year or two. Um, I I had to rewatch the fight. I was like, "Dang, that's fucking badass!" It shows. It really shows like Dooku as a duelist. When um, everyone's like, "Oh, Dooku's like one of the best best lightsaber duelists of all time," you don't really see yeah, anything of him showing that until now. He's blinded. He's just awoken from bed, and there's like five against one, and one of them's Ventress, and he smokes all of them blinded. Like it's extremely impressive, extremely exciting, and you just it just shows that Dooku's like on another level right now, and they completely underestimated him. It's very exciting, so I'll put it in C. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm ready to move on just now. Keep it in D tier. I I didn't I wasn't really moved by it. I just kind of was <laughs> very was very dull in my opinion. Uh, some neat choreography, <laughs> but. I don't think he, the uh, animation does it any justice, in my opinion. And the emotional impact is, like, a zero for me. Like, I agree. That's why I have it in I'm not trying to hate on it or anything. Like, it's nothing... It's not bad at all. Um, it just... Yeah, I get it. You just don't uh, it, see the... Yeah, it's just not my thing, really. It, I just yeah, don't really see, like, thing. the... Um, I just like that. It's, it's cool watching Dooku uh, not even have to whoop some ass. fight people. Right. Right, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty. I think that's fucking it's, cool. It's fun, um, and also too, it is Ventress trying to get revenge on him, and she fails over and over again. She she never gets right. revenge, basically. No. Dooku is him all throughout the Clone Wars. Yep, that's right. He's just too good for everybody. All right, next one, Sidious and Maul. Good. You you can start this one, William. I'll I'll or unless you want to start the next one, you probably want to start the next one. So I'll do this one. Okay. Um. Okay, so I didn't rewatch this fight, but what fun, from what I can remember, it's pretty awesome. Like the choreography is great. Um, it's pretty intense. Is this the first time that we see Sidious really use a lightsaber in Clone Wars? I believe it is. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. just kicks some royal ass. Like 
these these two Dathomirian guys are just going around trying to fuck everybody up, and like they just don't stand a chance against Palpatine. He fucking kills Savage right here, doesn't he? He does, yeah. He yeah. Does. He does without yeah, even like, looking at him. <laughs> like this is a cool dark side on dark side fight. Like we don't see that a lot in Star Wars at all. Mm-hmm. And it's neat to see this in the Clone Wars. And I remember it being one of the better choreographed fights in the Clone Wars. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm thinking high A, low B, or high B, low A. What do you guys think? I was thinking uh, I B. Agree. Yeah, I have it smack dab middle of B. It's on the same level of like the Obi Wan versus Maul Savage. Yeah, me. it's like I, that. I have it right below that. Yeah, I agree. I'll go ahead and put that there as well. I love I I something I love about this fight is just watching like it reminds you. Because at this point, you know, you're like, man, Maul's so powerful. He's like doing stuff. Right. And it reminds you the who's still in charge. Who's boss. Yeah. <laughs> like Sidious is on a whole nother level. Right. right. Agreed. He's laughing and like doing backflip just for fun. Just because he can. Right. Like yeeting himself around like Yoda <laughs> playing with him. And this yeah, is cool. This was a this was a crazy cliffhanger because uh, we see him. Um, say, he doesn't kill Maul. And we don't know what happens to him for years because I think anyway. Yeah, because it was like so. season six. And then Disney bought it and canceled Clone Wars. And then they brought it back. <laughs> and finally, like, maybe we like some bugs clarified what happened. But it was a pretty cool cliffhanger that I left wondering for like months. I think even years. So I was like, man, what happened to them all? <laughs> and then. Yeah, and then we have the up. Son of Dathomir comics. And the next fight. So this is fun. It was it was a really fun fight. Yeah. So I guess I'll I'll leave the next one, huh? Yeah. Alrighty. Um, this is something I that should have rewatched nice. this one. Uh, do you want to rewatch it? Real quick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give it a rewatch. Real <laughs> okay. Yeah. The co- choreography in this fight is incredibly good. Like yeah, compared used... to the Count Dooku fight, what the fuck? They used the, the real choreography people. Choreography in this was yeah mocap. Okay. That. That is why this looks so goddamn good. Yeah. It looks like a movie. Yeah, it's what? crazy. The Maul quality is amazing. Like a badass. Yeah. They had the mall actor game from episode one do this mocap. What's with that jumping shit he does? That's sick. Yeah, the mall actor is crazy. Guys with bad jeans. Wow. Yep. Are they worth it? Jeans go with everything. This is on also a too, whole nother level. The quality is... The animation quality is just... It's like, smooth, yeah. When I watch this, I don't think I'm watching animation. I forget I'm watching a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the last fight I fought, or the last few fights I watched were the Rebels one and the Dooku one. And they were also like, rigid. Copy. Yeah, rigid. And this one's so smooth. Oh. God, this is some good choreography. Damn, I can't believe this was happening like... at the same time as Obi-Wan and Anakin. Oh, like, dude. Shit was going down. Someone made an edit where they combine the oh, those yeah. last four episodes of season seven with the Star Wars 3 movie. It's so good. Great. I gotta watch that. Oh. Guys, this fight feels yeah. like when you finally meet the final boss in like Elden Ring or some shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, get their terrain the right now. This, Fuck, are the they? The build up to this, Ahsoka is like, you know, fighting on Mandalore. She moves on. And she finds a boss room with nothing in it but. Mall. <laughs> the mall. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the phase two when they're fighting in the rafters. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So no one wins this fight. Technically, Maul won. Yeah. I guess her lightsaber fell down, right? The only reason why he lost is he's like, "Please join me." <laughs> you know. Yeah. He 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 definitely got it. Though. It's how Maul always does his fights. He gets too like cocky. He's like, "I'll give you one." Right. Chance. This is Maul's first W. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's his only <laughs> damn W. <laughs> For me, I think it's S tier. Now that I gave it one more rewatch, because uh, it is, it is motion capped, which so it already looks. It's, it's on the same quality as like live action, right? Like mm-hmm. train actors. So it's really good. Um, it's a great interaction. Uh, Maul and Ahsoka talking about um, the war, and Maul trying to tell Ahsoka that it's already all over. Because Maul knows what's up. Um, he knows it's already over, and it's cool seeing him try to convert her. Uh, obviously, she says no. Obviously, she says no. Um, but there's great stakes involved, and even then, it's it's really cool seeing them all almost scared at the end when he falls, is he knows what's right. going to happen. And overall, also too, this the scenery change is great. The quality. This is phase something two. cool. Yeah, phase two. 
<laughs> uh, something cool about this, so, something that is cool that, or that's a benefit from Disney claiming Clone Wars and actually coming back and making it is that Disney budget's definitely in there. It looks yeah. absolutely amazing, not just the fight, but also to the scenery and everything. Like, I forget I'm watching a cartoon watching watching some of these later Clone Wars episodes. Agreed. So it looks great. I throw it in, and I think it's good enough to be an S2. I agree with that. I'd also yeah, like to I add on. totally agree with anything, everything William said. Yeah, one thing I would like to add on to is just there are stakes in this fight as well, but clearly those stakes don't really amount to much. But, like, it kind of offers up the idea that, like, Maul had his own shit going on. Like, well, he had his plan. Pretty, big pretty master big plan. End, exactly. He had pretty big end game plan. He wanted to stop Sidious, which is kind of crazy. That, exactly. He's kind of yeah. on the, he was on the Jedi side, really. Like, he, they both wanted to, to defeat the same guy. He was. He just, you know, you know, the enemy, enemy of my enemy is my friend. But it's kind of like an idea of they'd put their faith in Maul. But Maul would be on top after that, and who's better? Who who's you know easier to take care of, Maul or Sidious? But which I uh, you know in hindsight, clearly it would have been better to have Maul on top. But we don't know that you know. But it's kind of which kind of adds to that idea of like, hold on, what would have happened if Ahsoka said, "Okay, I'll join you," <clears throat> like. Right, she almost it's did. Kind of, he almost convinced exactly, her and, which, until he told her of, that Anakin was the Cho- Sidious is like being grooming him. You know, mm, exactly. He'd been groomed by Sidious, but <laughs> I think that's right. what puts this fight in S tier. Now, moving on. Yeah, I wanted to say a couple things really quick. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with everything the guys said. Um, it was the choreography is so well done. It's such a change of pace from the earlier uh, Clone Wars stuff, uh, and the Rebel stuff as well. Um, like William said, you kind of forget you're watching a uh, animated fight. It's just so well done. I love watching it. I don't think the stakes or the emotional impact is quite high enough to put it in S tier for me, but the choreography is some of the best in Star Wars. Period put it in high a okay so um i believe Are it's we... my turn yeah is it the obi-wan and darth vader fight it's so obi-wan uh, and darth vader it's it's my turn oh wait i, think. I don't have the, my picture in here it's obi-wan darth vader round two yes <laughs> am i missing Correct. the photo i'm missing oh it's right so, here okay i'm blind <laughs> what was the one before this it was the uh other clone wars one Gabe did that. Oh, okay. And then Obi Wan and Darth Maul. William did that. Yeah. So it's and then C. Okay. Um, Obi Wan. Oh my God. <laughs> really? <laughs> Jesus. I, I was I really hoping for the other Obi Wan Darth Darth Vader, but uh, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll switch. We'll switch. I got a lot of stuff to say about this one. I think okay. I can... Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we talked about this <laughs> off uh, the recording yesterday quite a, bit. quite a bit so i don't want to say too much but i want to break it down what we said with for you guys um i really don't even know where to start on this fight it kind of lore wise it kind of disrupts everything with within uh anakin and obi-wan's story f- between the revenge of the sith and the new hope or and a new hope it just messes up their whole interaction in the new hope it makes it all feel less deserved, less earned, and um, just takes away from kind of the magic of that moment uh, when you see them meet for the first time in 20 years since Obi-Wan quote-unquote killed Anakin that day. Because um, now every time you watch The New Hope, you're going to be like, oh yeah, you know, they re-met that one time and it was basically the same exact interaction. Obi-Wan kicked his ass and... Uh, it just kind of takes away from that. Um, and that's not even to mention the level of cringe in this fight. <laughs> Upon rewatch, I can't believe the amount of cringe. <laughs> like, like, something that William has said uh, in the past in these videos is Disney's lack of knowledge with the Force and how it works and how it's connected to kind of like a spiritualistic idea, uh, whether it's dark or light side. But 
No, they treat it like just it's like for example, Obi Wan just floating up all these rocks behind him, pushing his <laughs> arms forward and having a goddamn avalanche of rocks being tossed at Darth Vader as they crumble into pieces like like a mini dust gun, like upon <laughs> upon his armor. Uh, these ginormous boulders just crumbling upon Darth Vader's armor. Like, what is this, like, Tom and Jerry type shit? <laughs> like, Jesus is... It's so I mean, bad. It's I mean, so bad. Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan is changing. Obi-Wan just becomes Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just absurd. Like, these these Force abilities are just crazy. Like, you would never see Emperor Palpatine do that shit. Like, I'm, I thought that's why they made Starkiller... Legends because his force abilities were just he can't do comical. that stuff. Yeah, I've never even thought yeah. about that. So no, they're just like okay, Obi. We're just gonna make Obi Wan like the most powerful person in Star Wars. Just really Sidious quick, could have done that easily. No nerf him again. in that fight scene with Yoda. If like that's how it worked. Yeah, <laughs> like all the it's seats in the entire like, room float him to the air and yeah. go down on Yoda. <laughs> Obi Wan just had this intense, intense will to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't. Make but sense. no, it's it's comical. Uh, this shit's not the canon. The choreography man. is not great. Um, it's it just takes away from everything. It's 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 a little you hard to watch. Um, I will say at the end, the acting, both actors Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor, they are so good, and it holds up in this scene. That ending scene, even though this whole interaction should not exist whatsoever, they make it. They make that last part so emotional, even. You're definitely even, you're right. Yeah. Even like it makes you want to feel how how uh how Disney wanted you to feel watching this scene. Because they carry themselves so well and they deliver their lines so well. And Ewan McGregor just kills it with his facial expressions. You can see the tears in both of their eyes. It's insane that seeing Hayden Christensen's face inside that Darth Vader Vader mask, it's very emotional and intense. But I'm still putting it in cringe because it's cringe and it shouldn't. It's not exist. enough to make it go up to D two. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it feels like quite an it feels like a fan film. This fight. It does. It does. <laughs> yeah. It really does. It's a good way to say it. <laughs> I, if this yeah. were a fan film, I'd be like, "All right, this is pretty cool," but it's oh not. My it's, God. Ca- it's quote unquote canon. Every, everything <laughs> about the fight is fucking awesome, except the lore aspects. It just ruins everything. Well, I'm not even really a fan of the choreography. I think the like, choreography, the is camera kind of fun. angle, it is fun. I think some of, like I said, it looks like it looks like a fan film. Yeah, it does look like a fan film. That's probably <laughs> the, just the best way to put it. And For it's me, it's just crazy. yeah, like the lore Dude, and then the the force abilities just being completely ru- destroyed puts it into cringe for me. And I'm sorry for everyone that enjoys this fight. Like, I do appreciate it and if you if you put your comments down below and tell me why <laughs> I, I, I will listen to you i will try and maybe people are going to freak minds. out seeing where we want to put the next fight <laughs> this is the, the high tier fight? for me the oh next one. Yeah, 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 yeah okay yeah i agree right, the right. next fight like non Star Wars fans are not going to understand, man. This right? fight, completely disregarding the previous one we just spoke of, this fight <laughs> is one of the greatest fights in Star Wars. Not for its choreography, clearly, uh, but for <laughs> what it means, you know. Very similar to the Obi Wan Darth story. Darth Maul. Exactly, yes, very similar. Like this is the first time Obi Wan and Anakin have seen each other since. Revenge of the Sith, and you can see how each character has ch- completely changed, and one has overcome what has happened, and the other one is still stuck. Obi Wan has completely grown out of this, you know, hopeless, kind of almost broken fearful. shell that we see, fearful shell, and he's completely let go of all of that as, you know, a true Jedi. He's basically become like he's reached Nirvana. You know, <laughs> yeah. from a Buddhist perspective, he's reached Nirvana, and that's kind of like full circle. It, it kind of shows the progression from Obi Wan's character from the Phantom Menace all the way till here. Is like you see him start off as an angry Padawan, you know, full of rage, full of uncertainty and f- fear, to this 
pinnacle of what being a Jedi is all about. And even even in the face of his biggest mistake, biggest failure, he's holds strong and still has that, you know, you can see that it's not a part of him anymore. As for Anakin or Darth Vader, not a day has gone by. He still holds this confidence. Exactly. Every day that has gone by has been him thinking of Obi-Wan and how and that rage that he has for everything Obi-Wan has taken from him, which, you know, not really, but quote unquote Padme, he took Padme from him. His ability in the force, his limbs, everything was gone because of Obi-Wan. Um, and you can see that in the dialogue. Yeah, and Vader is like fearful. I wanna no. I wanna make one and, point. Uh okay. Uh because Vader's Vader's rhetoric rhetoric in this fight is very confident. Like you can see he wants to intimidate Obi-Wan and he wants Obi-Wan to think like he wants Obi-Wan to be scared of him. But in his mannerisms, you can see he's very timid. He's very concerned mm-hmm. to engage in combat with Obi-Wan because obviously we all know what happened last time. And yes, I'm referring to M- Mustafar, not whatever this planet is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um yeah, I just wanted to mention like the contrast between Vader's words and his actions in this fight, because it's just so fascinating, because you know he's he's nervous and scared, but his, his demeanor know. is totally confident and intimidated, intimidating, mm-hmm. but Obi-Wan is simply unfazed. Um, um, I'd like to add, especially after seeing uh, Darth Vader versus Ahsoka and Darth Vader versus Kanan and a little Ezra guy, and then even Darth Vader in the um, comics, Jedi video games, the Jedi video games. Like he's insanely aggressive, no matter who he's facing. Insanely aggressive. And then there's this fight right here, yeah, where he he doesn't make a <laughs> single move, not one. Yeah, he knows Obi Wan could just... beat him. Probably he's so scared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, just... correct me, I mentioned... correct me yeah, if I'm get... wrong. Obi Wan's the only one that has defeated Anakin. Or uh, Vader. Is he actually? Yeah, oh, he's the only one who's. I guess peak Vader. Anakin. Yeah, peak yeah. Anakin. Yeah, I, I would say Dooku, but that was. This, this is probably the only Anakin. person. This is the <laughs> only person in the Star Wars galaxy that I would say Anakin slash Darth Vader has ever truly been afraid of. He's never been afraid of the Emperor, even. Not even in a li- not even a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. like all the interactions we see Vader have in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. He is just the complete dominating force. He's not scared of anyone. He's mm-hmm. totally, yeah. Im- he's totally implementing his power over everybody until this fight. Yep. So Something. cool. Through the <clears throat> comics, the video games, the shows, all of it. Yeah, I would like to add it? another thing um, to that as well. Something I find really cool. Uh, oh, Darth Vader doesn't really know like what Obi Wan can do at this point either, which is part of the reason why he's scared of him. Right. But right. One one of the biggest like. He goes out trolling uh, uh, Darth Vader here because he lets him kill him. He he, he concedes. Yeah, Darth yeah. Vader impulsively attacks him. Um, right. He's obviously really confused on why the hell he vanished. Right. <laughs> Never seen this shit before. But um, this is mocking him. Uh, Darth Vader doesn't like that. Uh, Ob- like Obi Wan died on his terms. Yes. Is right? another like final like hi i got you moment yeah um and he's confused he too because him. he doesn't understand how he vanishes which this is goes into that thing like you know the th- the sith desire immortality and they can't get it being right. the dark like that being in the light side um i think even in a comic book i think it's canon too obi-wan starts talking to him <laughs> as oh, a force right. goes and he's just like what the hell is going on <laughs> like bro, bro just like, to- like Contest just beat one. him in every way. It's it's amazing. Yeah, I'm putting an S tier. I think I'm gonna put it in S tier well. too. When Guys, I gotta be honest. Contest that immortality is not possible for Sith. And I'm moving Ahsoka and Maul down to A tier, top A tier. Guys, That's fair. yes, kid. I gotta be yeah. honest. I have this. I have this uh, itching feeling that. <laughs> All these three fights from the originals might end up in S tier for me. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yeah, like they're agree, all like, so good. Holy shit! Yeah. There's so much like, yeah, it's it's great. It's just it's, they go with awesome the story. Now. It's not just random ass exactly. fighting. Exactly. 
No, that no, being said, when you can so potent. It's your turn on the uh the next one. Are you ready? That's fair. That's kinda how I, mean, I felt about some of the Clone Wars fights, so that's kinda why I let you guys do the most of that. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this fight's great. It's just better than I remember. Isn't it? Because yeah. there's action too. Like yeah, he's yeah. testing him. I see what you mean. It's, like it's he's going really in weird. swinging, it's... and Vader's like, no. Nah, right? uh -uh. yeah. yeah, look at the choreography. Luke it's so good. It's very, very fun. It's like fencing. The choreography is so underrated in this, uh, in the original series. I agree. Cause like, it's just so neat. He disarms him. Yeah, Vader's excited. He's like, whoa, yeah. this, this clip. Hold up. I paused it he knows at the weirdest son, spot. Too. Yeah, he's like, man, I can finally take over Darth Sidious. Look at this clip I got. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I remember that from a kid, being a kid. I always remember that part. It was so... It looks like a fucking... <laughs> Look at his feet. What, <laughs> what is... What the hell? Bro looks like an Among Us character or something. <laughs> so, yeah, this fight is... Um, is It's incredible, really. Uh, it's... So much happens in this fight uh emotionally and just like we were saying with the obi-wan versus anakin i mean obi-wan versus vader in a new hope their mannerisms are so on display here like you can see that vader is um totally toying with him uh luke is completely you know on edge he's never wielded a light wielded a lightsaber uh in combat with any anyone else He's trained for Yoda for like a very with Yoda for a very small amount of time. And he's jumped into this situation that is very clearly uh way over his head right now. Um so you can see Luke, he but he's showing his his wittiness. He's showing that he is a Skywalker. You can see his 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 uh abilities and you can kind of start to see Vader uh acknowledge that to a degree. But Regardless, Vader just kind of toys with him this whole time. He's kind of, you know, and, and at this point, Vader knows that Luke is his son. So you can, when you think about that and you watch this That's fight, him. it's just very interesting because you can see like him kind of just toying with him and just having, it almost seems like he's having fun with it. Uh, but yeah, with all this being said, it kind of leads up to that final moment where you know, one of the biggest plot twists in history. You find out that <laughs> Vader is Luke's father. Just a massive moment. You see Luke at his absolute lowest. He falls. He lets go. Uh, still does not give in to the dark side. Um, even after losing his hand and just being completely and utterly defeated by this evil figure that he has just found out is his father. Luke has always thought his father was an upstanding, kind talented jedi cough cough <clears throat> he he was <laughs> but he has just found out that you know the darkest evil in the galaxy is his father so he falls and you know accepts whatever his fate may be at the bottom of that shoot and uh so good just much like the uh previous fight we talked about it's very symbolic and very very well done um aaron you had your your take your, your... yeah aaron what were you gonna say uh i kind of you kind of landed all the marks um when i really think about the original trilogy the more i think like that they are my favorite of all the trilogies granted uh, revenge of the sith is my favorite movie but the the original trilogies just have that you know magic and that mm -hmm. bam 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 that's just perfect like they're all those three of those movies are like damn near 10 out of 10 movies on top of being 10 out of 10 Star Wars movies. Right. Um, not that that has much to say about this fight, but the fight, you see a, a Luke that is very, you know, resembling of his father. It's almost like a chirality of Luke fighting him, Anakin fighting himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Anakin just wipes the floor with him. Like a younger <laughs> version of himself. Exactly, yeah which I like a lot about this. But what I like a lot, too, is that at the end, when they're fighting, when Luke is, like, faced with joining him or death, 
Luke makes the decision that Anakin didn't. And he chose to jump. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's very impressive. His first at this attempt point, to resist in the dark side. Yeah. Exactly. He exactly. chose death it. over ex- over this big shock of like, oh my god, that's my father. Like, I know if I heard that, I'd be like, Do you I'm think Darth Vader thought he died? I got like he was to. trying to kill himself. He's like, God damn it, that's my only chance of beating Emperor Palpatine. He just eats himself into the void. Um, <laughs> he he might have, but then remember at the end of the he movie, he would have like a connection between them. Yeah. He like senses that Luke's still alive. Yeah. But, but he's, I wonder if that went through his mind for I, a second. <laughs> yeah, he's like, are you, are you serious? Like, that's it? Bruh. But if <laughs> I were Luke, I would have, I would have been like, I probably would have gone with him. It's like, holy shit, that's my dad. Like, right. I, I wouldn't I have been more. more. I've, that's for I've, sure. Every living, waking moment of my life, I've asked and wondered and sought after my father, and that's him. Like, I would have taken his hand as opposed to jumping, but Luke chose not to, and that's exactly what the Jedi stood for, which is, it's cool. The chirality in that. Anyways. Right. Yeah, I'd like to make two comments real quick, just two extra comments. Um, uh, the fighting in this is really cool. Uh, I think, I see, it looks a lot like fencing. Like, it's really good. Like, people hate on the original uh, choreography uh, sometimes, mm-hmm. because they think it's kind of boring, but I, I just rewatched this, um, and I think it's actually really good. The Luke, like I agree. The, Luke's acting really good because he he's fighting like an inexperienced fighter. He's swinging right. back and forth, and Darth Vader is being very elegant with his attacks, and it looks like fencing. It's really cool. I just want yeah. to bring that up. Also, too, um, I think Darth Vader might be rather excited in this encounter because this is his chance <laughs> to, you know, convert his son. Um, exactly. So because he he's tried in the past to overtake Palpatine, and he he knows he can't in his in his form, thanks to Obi Wan, <laughs> right? And his own arrogance. Uh, if he, if he gets ego. electrocuted, bro, it's over. Yeah, power shuts down. Just another comment yeah, I want to add. It's S tier. Yeah, Agreed. easy S tier. Is so much so good. It just has a different feeling behind it. Yeah, I know, right? I don't know, why can't they pull this off? Man. It's really not that hard. I remember JJ Adrams talking about the Force Awakens. He's like, yeah, we want to recreate that magic in Star Wars 4. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you definitely didn't do it. <laughs> no. I heard that shit a lot from like Disney people, though. Disney yeah. executives and directors. We want to recreate the magic. It's all about recreating things that have already been done. There is no this is like seeing the end of like the longest book series like ever. I know, right? Like from Phantom Menace all the way through the Clone Wars to the like, this is crazy. Like everyone's dead at this point. It is crazy to like, think about. Everyone you know in this universe is all dead and is stent like all these hundreds of people, all these characters you learn to love are like gone. And it's just this is like the last moment here. It's- Isn't it interesting? Because like you feel like all the Jedi are living through Luke right now. Yeah. You feel like and not Ray. Like, if, <laughs> if Luke fails right now, like this is the end of the Jedi forever. Yeah. The stakes like, are so he- high. The stakes are absolutely massive. Like everything Luke is doing here, is, is, so that those Jedi, that we all know and love, did not die in vain. This is why. See, some people like you to watch the original saying? first, mm-hmm. and the sequels. Mm-hmm. But what you said is why you need to watch it from the beginning in order. Yeah. Because this oh, stuff has exactly. so much more weight, and you need to watch Clone Wars with it too. Like it just has so much more weight behind so everything. Weight. Yeah, I agree. Um. Yeah, I know. I just it's like so this is Anakin Skywalker. Recreate like, that. This is like this is like almost depressing seeing this compared I to know. like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like like look how it is like he looks like an old man right now. Like he's moving like I an know. old man. He's like fucking hundred years old. And then like mm-hmm. you know this is like these are the same goddamn been, these are the same people. He's been used. Look at this. 
Like, that's just crazy. crazy. He's been anyway. used for the whole part of his whole life, and you can see it so well in this scene. God, Star Wars is such you a can good story. It's crazy. Such a good Luke story. is just overpowering Vader towards the end of this fight. You could totally he is, see it. Yeah. Massive difference. I don't know what's happening. Is Vader like fight. just kind of like just can't get himself to like really want to like kill his son or something? Yeah. What's going on? That's partly what's going on. Also, Luke's Luke has just improved. Padme He's too. Really finding his true power. Like I feel like. But you know, yes, like Padme, well, yeah, like probably thinking about that too. It, yeah, he's thinking this is my son. He's doing what I should have been doing this whole time, because he's mo minutes away from, you know, picking up the emperor and killing him. Yeah. So this whole during this whole fight, Vader is probably so unsure of every everything. He's rethinking his whole life. Right Vader's now. collapsing at the end of this. Yeah, he's he is. Collapsing. He's rethinking his whole life. Look at this. He's not even trying to fight back. Yeah. He's like, I can't do this anymore. He's just defeated, mentally and physically. He's really just defeated him. He's realized really? what, you know, the truth is. What yeah, Obi-Wan okay. was trying to get through to him on Mustafar has hits him. God, That's I can't believe crazy. how fucking fire this is after wa talking about, like, the whole Clone Wars and oh my goodness. everything. It's so good. Yeah, this is why Star Wars fans like Star Wars. Yeah. Like some people this don't get it. Like this is why we like Star Wars. Is this shit yep. right here? Easy S tier for me as well. Next one. Here, guys, isn't it crazy that all the fights that George Lucas have made are all S tier? <laughs> I know. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I know. Well, who would have guessed? Anakin. <laughs> um. But yeah, this is but yeah. So Return of the Jedi. Uh, Next one rematch. Yeah, this is the rematch, and this is just, it really is the magnum opus of the saga of Star Wars. Those first six films, everything in between, everything that's been added, whether it's, you know, the Clone this Wars, is the, and Rebels. The real duel the of the end face of the right story. here. This is where everything yes. lies. Everyone we know in Star Wars is dead at this point. Like, yes. it's just Vader and Luke. Like all your favorite yeah. Jedi and clone troopers, they're all gone. This everything's on this this standing on this. Everything has come to pass, and uh, we were just ta saying off off the mic, um, like what Luke does here, everything that Luke does here is so so important <clears throat> because all the Jedi that have died before him, all the clone troopers, everyone that has fought for this cause of like good against evil um all of that lies in luke right now and everything every decision he makes is so that they did do not die in vain if he turns to the dark side here then you know the world is or the galaxy is just you know everything the jedi did everything that obi-wan and all these people we loved everything they fought for would have just been tossed dust in the wind but no nothing like luke's luke's you know, he 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 is a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's isolated in this throne room all by himself, alone. It's so easy to be able to just turn to the dark side like that with these two evil figures. He's in this throne room, but he's the one source of good here with everything on his shoulders, and it is just so inspiring to watch him take down these two figures. Not to mention this crazily crazy intertwined relationship that he has with Darth Vader. You can totally see in the mannerisms of Darth Vader right now. William was just saying this. He just looks and feels like an old man. He looks and feels defeated the second the second they start fighting. Even before that. Yeah, he can't every get time himself to show... fight Luke really. He's not like he no. just he's like this is he, finally his morals his his morals the limit of like his morals have been reached. Like he can't he, he just can't Correct. kill his son. It's right. Padme too. And like he's probably thinking about Padme during this whole encounter as well. Surely he's thinking about like this is my son. Like, pa I, you know, he's remembering like Padme, Padme wouldn't and, approve like, of him. They killing created his son. They cr they created Padme this. Padme wouldn't approve this. 
you know, Jedi that st- stands before him that's doing everything that he w- should have done so long ago. And even just the camera angles panning on Vader's face, you, you, it's almost like you can read his facial expressions through that mask. And with the, the, the whole choreography with the fight, you can see Luke's pure passion and determination. And he's obviously on a different right. level uh, than Darth Vader at this time. He's surpassed him. Uh, and Vader is just not emotionally able to keep up with him. He's defeated emotionally and physically. And uh, Luke still prevails, still refuses to give into his dark side, even though the Emperor is sitting there telling him, just like he did with Anakin, to give in to his Which hatred and you. cut down his father. Luke does not succumb to that because he is the true hero of Star Wars at the end of the day. Um, this this moment is everything that all the other films and shows led up to, and everything is so it defines everything things. like all this, especially. Yeah. We were talking about how, like, you can watch the shows however you want, but we, we believe you should watch everything over because it just makes these scenes far more impactful because you're thinking agreed, about agreed. everything you watched before this, not just originals, but you're also thinking about, you know, people from the Rebels, people in the Clone Wars, people in mm-hmm. the prequels. Um, it There's adds so a lot battles. more weight to this, so many wars. Um, to this fight. So much <clears> death <throat> happened in between. It just makes it so much um, more impactful. And yeah, like you were saying, the um, the stakes uh, yeah. are there. Like all, like everything would have been for nothing. And you really feel that if you've watched uh, the prequel. Yes. Clone Wars. It's yes. not mm-hmm. as bad. It doesn't feel like that as much if you only watch the originals. Exactly. Um, so we would highly recommend watching everything in chronologically, except for uh, maybe Obi Wan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't watch Obi Wan. Yeah, for, it for me, it's all. the six movies in the Clone Wars and then like a few episodes from Rebels, basically. Exactly. And then if you exist. want, you can throw Rogue One in there. Holy shit. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yes. Rogue One. You too. need to watch Rogue, Rogue One's one. great. That, that one, too. Um, if, you're, if you're interested in the Skywalker saga, Andor is. You don't need to watch it. But if you're interested in the Skywalker saga, is good, apparently. you need to watch it. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and say this is either the best fight in all of Star Wars or it's right behind uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin. It's totally personal preference. I Um, I have it in the same spot, Gabe. I moved it all the way up to right behind Obi-Wan and Anakin. Yeah, I am very confident with what's in my S tier. Like, this looks great. Like, yeah, me too. Like, how beautiful this looks. It makes me so happy. I'm feeling great right now. happy with my s tier uh but it's over s tier will not be touched after this yep this is the end of the praising of star wars you probably know <laughs> the rest of this video is going to be yapping and complaining about this garbage that's coming up <laughs> although this is, yeah. is going to be interesting because some of us actually have some pretty big disagreements with uh what we like and don't like with these yeah as so these films naturally around, tend to do to people it seems like yeah <laughs> it's very divisive yeah, films very, very divisive <laughs> Stick around for some. Uh, we actually might disagree. Part three. Um, yeah, third. Fake I Star guess. Wars. This is fake Star Wars, is what I call this. I think we should uh, preface this by saying, if, if you guys uh, disagree with what we're saying, please don't take offense. Please just go straight to the comment section. Let us know why. I love please to hear do, your opinions. Yeah. These are just uh, opinions. I always yes. I res- I respond to all the comments. Any anything you guys leave, Here's I the... really love and appreciate. <clears throat> Here's the thing with these big, like, long-form, like, franchises that have so many different shows intertwined. Like, we're all taking different things from this as we watch it, right? We're all taking different values, uh, mm-hmm. appreciating different, different things. Like, some people just like to fight. Some people are more in the story. There's some in between. Uh, we're all, like, we understand that, right? Like, mm-hmm. our, even our personal life, right, kind of dictates what we value and what resonates with us in these films. So... Right. Um, there really is no hate. Like, I'm going to meme around and think these are, gar- like, and say these are garbage, but, like, I'm just joking, right? <laughs> right. Right. Like, it's all you in You can like fun. whatever the hell you want. Yeah, it's just having fun. Exactly. Right? exactly. These films are naturally divisive because, you know, George Lucas didn't guide these. So it is going to be kind of, uh, there's going to be more division than anything we've seen before. 
that naturally causes the brings up the question is this star wars if george lucas isn't involved is it star wars it's a natural Ship it these it's a mere husk natural. these these movies are a husk of what star wars used to be <laughs> <laughs> All right, William, you can start off with the first two. Uh, I think we are going to have some differing opinions if you guys want to stick around for this. And oh, Finn and... <laughs> okay. We should oh, probably just do these, like, back-to-back, like, kind of talk about... Can I start with Ray and Ray? Can, can I Can I do the first Ray and Finn fight? I want to start with that one. So, yeah. Well, or do you, you want mean, to start like, with both, both of them, William? Well, one of you guys can start with the this one over here. Which one? Oh, which one? <laughs> you can't see his screen. Confused. What are you talking about? Um, oh yeah, I'm like this one over here. It's like in Minecraft where you say, <laughs> over here, guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we're here in the goddamn is over here. It's exactly um, like Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just saying, I want to start with the first Finn and Ray fight. Ray versus and one you guys can take okay. Finn and Ray if you Finn want. Finn and Ray? I mean, Finn and, Finn and Kylo. See, <laughs> I don't know the names right in this show. <laughs> brother okay. just said, so- brother just said. <laughs> I'll start with the first Finn and Ray fight, and then you guys can do <laughs> Finn and Ray if you want. <laughs> God, right, I'm freaking go out. Shit. It's yeah, but you guys go first because Finn and Kylo go first. So you go. Okay, Finn, Finn and Kylo. Okay, that's what I was I saying. You, I and I want to do the the first Finn, not Finn. And God Ray. damn it, Kylo and Ray. Kylo and Ray. Oh, I'm sorry about that, guys. I'll just, I'll just do using the, the hell out of me. I promise I watch these films. I don't know, man. I don't have a lot to say. There's not much to say. Um, I know you like it more than I do. You guys, I do. like this fight. To be honest, it's not it's not anything special, but I really don't dislike it. I think it's kind of neat to see just this random dude pick up a lightsaber who is an ex stormtrooper. It's kind of like what would happen if a stormtrooper would pick up a lightsaber against Kylo Ren. Uh, the setting here is beautiful. I I love the dark snow. It's obviously. Special effects are top notch. Mm. Uh, Disney's budget is fully on display here. Um, so what we're witnessing right here is kind of a severely injured Kylo, both mentally and physically. I think he's beaten and broken down after just murdering his father. Just to remind everybody, yeah, Han Solo is his daddy. Yes, correct. That's correct. And he, he just murdered his ass. <laughs> and uh, he just got smoked by by a bowcaster so he's got this fully charged massive gashing <laughs> wound in him but he still manages to take down this this Finn guy pretty quickly just by slashing his spine but yeah. i think it's neat to see uh to see kind of a non force user uh fight this injured kylo i think it's kind of a it's a very interesting uh little uh encounter and i think the setting is good finn's emotions are obviously very high if it were me i think i'm gonna put it in c tier um yeah i know uh william probably wants to get us started on this one right William. yeah well um not to repeat what you said i just want to add something this 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 fight is giving me the same kind of vibes that dark vader versus um ezra and uh i always forget his name uh his his master Ganon. Kanan, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not really a fight. It's just kind of, you know, they clearly more experienced person beating up uh, someone that's just trying to, to survive a little bit longer. Um, right. And I have that in D tier, and I, I, I'm i seeing very, uh, like, parallels between that. I think it's the same kind mm-hmm. of thing, because there's really not much to it. Yeah. Um, I might put it in C tier, yeah. but I think it's cringe that, um, like, Finn isn't dead, because his spine gets, like, obliterated by right, the yeah. like i guess and i get that i guess like only a, a centimeter actually cut through his skin although it didn't look like that right um but yeah everything else yeah, it looks great it's lasted. beautiful um I, I d tier just so you guys know um the reason i have it above that fight is because to me it's just leaps and bounds prettier like i could watch this fight all day <laughs> that's fair <laughs> um yeah. i struggle yeah. to watch the rebels fight it's like horrendously <laughs> yeah. i think it bad. i think i think both of you guys pay far uh-huh. much more attention to the way things look the visuals. than I do. Yeah, yeah. that's so fair. Let me, let like, me leaps and bounds more than I do. I have, One last I have thing. some thoughts as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, 
I, I also don't want to discredit it too much by Finn not being like killed by that, just because it's not like yeah, he, it's a small he might thing. as well be dead. He might as well be dead. You find out he's alive after the fight, so I, See, I don't want to knock. This it too starts much for the that, trend where people get, get injured by lightsabers and never die. It's kind of like this thing now with Disney. Like lightsabers right. aren't lethal weapons; they just kind yeah, of a mere inconvenience. Put you in the hospital for a Very week, and then you're good. God, don't even get me started on. Not you, a week, you, bro. You, Seconds. Just in case, just in case you guys didn't notice, we didn't put a certain fight in here where someone gets stabbed in the chest and survives. So <laughs> go, go figure what that is. But yeah, anyways, Aaron, what were you yeah. Say? How come Han's dead? Hmm? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know he fell down Fuck. a big hole, but they could have gone and grabbed him. Luke Skywalker fell down a big hole and survived. Like, come on, man. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They could. It was. It was only gone. a belly wound, or upper lower chest wound. He only got stabbed through the heart. The fuck? Why is he dead? <laughs> Why is he dead? <laughs> Force seal him. Force seal his ass. Force seal him. Uh, exactly. What I okay. had to say is just, I agree with you, William. It's quite literally the same as the Kanan versus. Uh, uh, Vader and uh, Kanan and Ezra versus Vader, but not only is it prettier, I also like the concept of it a little bit more. Like, there's more of like a des desperation with Finn, mm -hmm. as with with Kanan and Vader. It's kind uh, of like yeah, okay, right. we just need to save, we just need to cut some time for the ship to get ready. But with with Finn, it I almost feel like what I like so much about. Oh dear God! What's Finn's actor's name? John Boyega. John Boyega is an excellent actor, and I think he does a great job here, portraying desperation. Like this is his fucking only chance. Final stand, basically. You know, his final stand, and he he gets blitzed, right? But <laughs> you can see the desperation and feel the desperation, which is very cool. And I, I'm gonna put it in C tier. Yeah, you're kind of right. Maybe I should show it to C tier. Um, yeah, but. That's all great, but I wasn't really emotionally invested in any of the stuff that was going on. That's, so I'm moving back totally down to D-Chair. So, yeah. That's totally fair. All right, William, you want to get us started with the next one? That's basically the same same fight. Yeah, so of. this follows up right after. Um, That's fight. I college. think I also want to throw this in D-Tier. Um, so let's get the good things out of the way. It looks great. Um, this is Ray's first time wielding a lightsaber, and she clearly has talent. Um, <laughs> right, she's holding her own. Ky Kylo is injured, so that is a good argument for why he just didn't kill her right away. Right. That said, some stuff that's really pulled me out of like the realism here is uh the way they fight because Kylo should still be very good at wielding a lightsaber even if he's injured. Mm -hmm. Um. Because there's this thing called muscle memory. <laughs> so if you train right. with something for a long time, you're still going to, it's, it's actually harder to not do, to do it the wrong way than to do it the right way. Um, because you train so much. And I, it's just, it's, it's hard to get immersed into for me because he only does sideways attacks, left and right, back and forth. And Ray's just defending. And something I find so funny is when, like, they're on the edge of that cliff, right? when the planet mm -hmm. starts cracking open and she closes her eyes and she starts beating him, right? Right. And here's what changes for her to beat him. She initiates the thrust attack. <laughs> it's like she closed her eyes and leveled up or something. Um, <laughs> she remembered, oh, I can thrust my lightsaber at him. I, I imagine like some random ass Jedi, like goddamn Ki-Adi Mundi, like, Use the thrust. Get out of him, <laughs> and, I know because apparently Kylo I can't him. handle it. He hits her with it like three times. <laughs> Kylo's like, "God damn it! I've never dealt with a thrust attack before." No, and she takes him down with that new newfound uh, technique, and then Kylo <laughs> falls. And I, it, it pulls. I can't take it, <laughs> like, yeah. or I, I can't. Uh, like it pulls me out. Just for context, too. All right, I do do a lot of martial arts. Um, I even do some sword fighting. So. Um, these things stand out to me a lot more than for other people. <laughs> I feel like, but I just thought it was goofy. I thought it was goofy. It it it, it didn't feel real. I don't think um, Kylo should have should have should have lost to this fight. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I agree. Uh, this yes. fight I like ahead, significantly man. less significantly less than uh, Finn. <laughs> Versus Kylo. I'm actually putting in a cringe tier. It's, just, it's like, just cringe to me. I can't take it. It's so bad. It's, it's cringe. 
it's just very poor quality. Um, Ray's character just genuinely pisses me off. I just hate how static she is and how how little of a um, personality she has. Yeah, yeah. There's quite literally uh, yeah. no character in her. Her character is a copy and paste of Luke, but let's make her not about really at all. Three but... million percent worse. I think he's trying to you say is I mean they're trying to make her like yeah. uh a, yeah, um, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Luke, if he had zero character development and like started a, that's out, that's what like, I'm saying. Holy shit! In the okay. middle. If you ever hear me legitimately comparing anyone to Luke, shoot me. Like that's not real. This. Yeah, well, I get it. you're. You're like Ray, that's what Disney was trying to do. They're trying, trying to, to recreate, recreate the original Luke trilogy. What they're doing with her. Yeah. They're trying to recreate Luke, but they they failed miserably. I hate her character. She's poor. I think I'm gonna put it in cringe as well. All right, or, I want to say a couple things. Your turn, Gabe. Um, yeah. Go so ahead. I think this, this fight, I think this fight doesn't start off too bad at all. I like seeing uh -huh. Kylo go on the aggressive right away. I like seeing uh -huh. Ray run and kind of just be very evidently scared and not sure what to do or how to wield that lightsaber. All she really knows is that she has the Force and she can make that lightsaber. <laughs> you know go from point a to point b into her hand so she has some yeah. level of confidence but she doesn't know how to use it um kylo's on the defense on the offensive he's driving her back um he drives her to a cliff i think up until this point it's a good fight um but this is where it gets cringe like william said she closes her eyes, discovers a new technique, and that is about <laughs> sums up the rest of this trilogy. Every time Ray closes her eyes, she discovers how powerful she is, <laughs> and she can levels up. Um, so she then proceeds to force back this powerful source of nature who, or force of nature who supposedly took down the entire new Jedi Order and Temple by himself, by himself. With, with a couple of other, you know, Ren Knights of Ren. Non-force users. Granted. You're telling me that Ray closed her eyes, leveled up about six times, and started smoking <laughs> this guy? Even if he's injured, it's he just not acceptable. Into fucking... Kylo never uh, trained against no. the thrust attack, man. He's never seen it. It's like a brand new move. It's like the video game got an update, and yeah. <laughs> they added the thrust move, and people just aren't used to it yet. You know? Yeah. Meta. <laughs> She's but, meta. Um, <laughs> yeah. She just but like I meta. said, up to this point where Ray does this, I like this whole interaction with Rey and Finn and Kylo. I think it's very well done. Yeah, yeah. I do too, Ky actually. You, you can see that Kylo's injured and he's not up to his standard. And he's also very emotionally, like, weak. In disarray. Uh, yeah. But he's still, he's still beating both of them. But this is, this is, like William said, this is where Disney starts this trend of just... It starts to teeter. Rey's... Ray's overpoweredness, which is a very, very big problem. I'm going to toss That's it in detail because of that. I want to put it in cringe, but yeah, I, I, I think there's a couple things to like it. Um, just I, I also really like the setting in this. I, I much prefer the setting in this to the Obi Wan Darth Vader fight Holy that's in shit, here. Too. It's just everything's fucking dark in that fight. I can't see shit. Yeah. So, how do you think it's about that you're right cash. isn't it you can't see anything huh how do you think the, about the that? setting is so bad like <laughs> it was filmed what? on a freaking iphone 15 it was a fan film yeah <laughs> like yeah, I said, they film. used an yeah. iphone to film so, this that's why it feels yeah. like a fan film bro i swear to god <laughs> it's filmed that's on an iPhone. Why i like it just as much as the Obi one show it's just they're yeah. equally trash yeah, I, I do it. like I get you guys putting it in cringe but i'm gonna put it in. i can see the beginning justifying it for d tier um, I totally agree too. I was totally okay, yeah. like with the beginning too, I mean, like how I started too. I was like, yeah, it's like you know, he's winning, she's losing. It makes sense, right? Um, right. but no, nah, that's not enough for me to move up to up. tier. Uh, I think the Darth Vader versus um, uh, Kanan and Kylo versus Finn fight is better than this one. <laughs> because at least well, they're more the realistic. <laughs> when you, in terms of. Star Wars lore and continuity. I prefer Kanan and Ezra versus Darth Vader, but you'll never catch me watching that fight ever again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you'll never catch me watching that shit. 
But See, I'll, that's the I'll thing. I'll watch Kylo versus Rey again, like because it's pretty, and it's extremely you know good looking, which makes it mesmerizing. That's another so thing too. That's uh, it, it does look good as well. But um, exactly. I don't seem to put. I think I learned from this. I don't seem to put much emphasis onto uh, the looks. Yeah. What's even the term for that? Yeah, just looks. The visuals. Visuals, visuals as much yeah. as you guys do. So yeah. I guess that's something where we're kind of different with that. I remember yeah, distinctly yeah, a couple times where like D. you guys were like with Elden Ring. I remember talking about graphics and you guys were like, oh, this is so beautiful. And like, I didn't like, like I would like, change the settings and I wouldn't notice anything different. And then you were like, no, nah, I this remember is, that too. I remember like lowering the settings if someone wasn't working. I was like, oh, just lower the graphic settings. Like, this doesn't look good. And I'm like, it looks the same. I don't see the No, difference. yeah. Gra- <laughs> I don't have an eye for it, like, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that has always been very like evident to me. Like yeah, important. Uh, yeah. I'm very a- aesthetically well. like inclined. All the best fights in S tier, like up until Obi-Wan dies, Obi-Wan's in all of them. <laughs> oh my God. You're right. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Obi-Wan's, Obi-Wan's a genius, bro. He knows he how to fight, bro. Out. He's also in F tier as well. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> not his fault. I don't, really, no. I don't really blame him for that one. <laughs> yeah. That's incompetent directors right there. Oh, we want has a lot of lightsaber fights, though. He does. He's I, like, he's in E tier, too. <laughs> he's everywhere. Yeah. He's all throughout the thing. Anakin's only in, like, two lightsaber fights in this. We are back. We took a little break. Now we're going to finish this off, though. Yes, sir. Right, so, the uh, scene. Yep, we're getting back into this with the throne room scene uh, from The Last Jedi, of course. And I'll take lead on this one. I know for a fact uh, we have a couple uh, vastly different opinions on this one uh, throughout our little group here. So uh, oh, I'll um, give my take. One second or two. I want to specify yeah. that we know this isn't necessarily a lightsaber fight. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's a big scene. It's very popular. And we have a lot to say about it. So we just figured. We'll throw it in there. Yeah, figured we'd throw it in and get get the um good good conversation going. Hopefully in the comments as well. So, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead. I may move this down as we talk or up. Probably not up, but I'm gonna go ahead and toss it in A tier. Right off. And I know. Yeah. I, okay. I know that's gonna that that might anger a lot of people, but I'll just give my quick two cents on it. So, uh. I really like this fight uh, for a multitude of different reasons. I love the setting. Uh, the color palette is beautiful. It's one of the most... I enjoy watching this fight uh, more than any other fight on this list than probably the... Except for the S-tier fights, of course. But I enjoy watching this fight <clears throat> a lot. I, I love uh, seeing kind of like the tandem between Rey and Kylo. They have a both a very different fighting style. Kylo's is very like aggressive. Um, a lot of things are happening in this fight. Obviously, it's very different from these other lightsaber fights where it's more or less easy to see everything. But there's so many things happening in this fight, so it kind of makes you want to boil or like slow everything down and look at it, which may or may not be a good thing. But it's not a good thing. Um, from when I slowed it down, <laughs> I honestly uh, don't see much wrong with it. If anything, it kind of makes me like the choreography more because there's little things that um, kind of show up that I'm like, oh, wow, that's kind of neat. I know that there's kind of like a, a take <laughs> out be, there that I must be that's, tunnel visioning. <laughs> that's that's the that's wrong. <laughs> but um, I was no, looking I, for the best I, stuff. I think the choreography mm-hmm. in this fight is the best by far in the sequels. I think it's very unique to the Star Wars universe. We haven't really seen anything like this two lightsaber wielders taking on kind of like whatever it is, 10 of these uh, Royal guards. But Medieval yeah, there's nights. a lot of cool <laughs> yeah, moments in this fight. If you're watching it as well, um, just that surface value, it's one of the most exciting fights on the list as well. Um, it's very exciting, especially the first time seeing it in theaters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also I did want to add the first time seeing it in theaters. L- let's say you're watching this for the first time, you know, at least in my head, when I watched it the first time, I'm thinking like, oh, wow, like what just happened? Like Snoke just was killed. Kylo and Rey are working together. The emotions are kind of high. You're like the whole course of the series just changed. You're like, what is what is going to to happen now? So I was feeling like very excited and 
I, my disbelief. emotions were definitely running high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, so, as so well. was dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just, it, it, it was, was crazy. Yeah, it, it really takes place after a huge, like, plot shock. twist. Yeah. yeah, you're like, uh, uh, okay. And then suddenly Kylo and Rey are together fighting with each other. And you're mesmerized, you know? Yeah. I really like Kylo's mesmerized. performance in this fight. You can see his, like, aggression and, like, you, but you could also see his weaknesses that he's like too um maybe like heavy handed with this mm-hmm. cross bladed uh or what do you call it cross guarded lightsaber his but um style definitely complements the lightsaber <laughs> yeah for sure um but no I think it's neat I think it's neat to see Ray and Kylo working together obviously story wise this went nowhere it completely got disregarded about five seconds after it happened unfortunately. <laughs> um, but in the moment, this is a great fight. I like it a lot. Um, I, you can slow down and nitpick it a little bit, but I don't really. Um, You're right. It didn't go anywhere. It was all. I don't really. It's all for nothing. That doesn't really uh, bother me when it, even when I do slow it down. Um, you know, I have a confession. Anyways, I'll, I'll I'll let William go ahead and take. Well, over I want Aaron to so. say his parts if he has anything to say. But okay, yeah. yeah. I, I I want to say real quick. Uh, when I first watched The Last Jedi, when mm-hmm. I left the theaters for a little bit, it was actually one of my favorite Star Wars films. I also... It uh, would have been my favorite if... was in the same boat. Yeah. I wasn't blue-balled with Luke Skywalker, but yeah. it was pretty close to that. I was like, wow, that was so cool. Obviously, you start mm-hmm. thinking about it and you realize how bad it is, but... <clears throat> right. Um, that's why I think some people Dude, like I was film. in the same they, boat. They never moved on from that. They never, like... It was like, yeah. oh, cool, move on. They aren't like Star Wars nerds. I want to, <laughs> right? Really no, yeah, you're right. It. I I loved this as well. Like it was plot, very, a lot of plot twists. Like it was exciting throughout, but there's just some deeper flaws for the Star Wars lore that obviously ruin it for yeah. people like us. Anyways, um, you, do you have anything to add? Aaron, to... Did you have anything? I don't have a whole lot to add, although I, I don't think that the choreography is like top top tier. There's a lot that I have that I I look into and I'm like. Okay, that's a little silly, but at the end of the day, I, I can totally look past that as the fight's, you know, extremely exciting and extremely uh, uh, mesmerizing to watch visually, not only visually, but um, not choreography wise, but like the movements of the characters. It's very satisfying to watch. And like with Kylo. I'd like to point out a specific moment, like when he drops his lightsaber, it's very like, oh shit, like you can see like what Gabe said, his flaws. Like he's he was going crazy on that one guy, killing him, and then he gets distracted with that and quickly has to dodge an attack and drops his lightsaber in the meantime. So I think it's kinda neat to show <laughs> oh, I that remember little, that little quirks. <laughs> that part, yeah. I do want to say one more thing. Uh, uh, you could probably slow down a lot of these fights and find a lot of things that don't really belong. Like, for example, Grievous and Obi-Wan. There's probably a lot of times where Grievous could have yeah. just smoked Obi-Wan because he only has one lightsaber. But no, I think bro, if this fight were in the prequels, form. people wouldn't be hating on it. If this fight were in the prequels, people would be, like, stoked on it. I That's disagree. my last thing I'll say for. Uh, I disagree. Before William takes over. It's my turn. I think this is the worst cho- choreographed fight in all of Star Wars. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> look, with the prequels, the actors actually had actually like trained everything, and they they rehearsed the same moves over and over and over again. This they didn't do that. Okay, they just had them run in there with like a rough sketch of a plan, and they made it look good with graphics and editing. I think the best way for me to just do this it's just show you guys also for the viewers too so they can kind of see what i'm complaining about i may be hating but i don't think i am you guys can tell me <laughs> after this i'm going to share my screen in discord here uh, share screen share screen um, um go live okay do you guys see my screen <laughs> oh wait hold on um i want to i want to share my full screen instead because you guys don't really need to see the sound we want to watch this in slow mo. <laughs> so yes, it's very dramatic. It looks cool. 
but we could watch any of these in slow mo and find something wrong with it. This is not. This is different though. Okay. Um, this is very different. Sequels? No, it's not. <laughs> I, I gave you the reason already. <laughs> I already told you in the beginning of this. Wait, why? The choreography? Yeah, because like they rehearsed it over and over again. Like it was rehearsed over and over again. There, this wasn't really rehearsed, and you'll you'll see this after um, I show you show you this. Now, do you guys see? My well, screen? yeah, but yeah, the I'm looking at the original right fights weren't, and also the Clone Wars fights washed out. Some of the early Clone Wars fights, like that Dooku versus Ventress, and the right, I keep getting one. a notification saying add a device, tap to set up your. BPK-10. I mean, those are better than this. To be honest, the way BPK ten. I highly disagree. Here, here, let me let me get my point across, okay? I didn't get all my notes done, but I do have some notes here. Um, I only got through like the first five seconds, but here we go. Okay, you guys ready? Apparently, uh, Adam Driver did all of his own stunts and all of his own fight scenes in this. A lot of work goes into choreography, especially when you have like 15 people in it. I get that, but I am comparing this to all this other stuff, and it's just not as good because there there wasn't that work put in to make it look nice. It was uh, it's, it's fool's gold. So this is how it starts out. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, actually, I have a funny thing. Note like this is I don't care about this, but look look, look at the length of the lightsaber. And now look at it now. <laughs> <laughs> But that's continuity error. That's totally something different. I don't hate on that. All right, so she grabs the lightsaber, right? She's like, oh, shit. Look at Kylo. He's, like, dead inside. <laughs> He's like, all right, are you ready for this? <laughs> okay, anyway, we need to get to the fight. Let's fight. So uh, we're, we're going to start with one guard at a time, okay? It's a little hard, but things happen fast. All right, so 144 to 149. We're going we're gonna to look at this, this guy here, uh, red guard fighting Quickly, Ray. I want to say... This this is why this fight is so different because there's about fifteen <laughs> people involved where the other ones have at the very most yeah three. two, so it's like it's kind of different from the rest of the fights. You can't really compare <clears throat> this choreography to the rest of it, but go on. On the ground, but he goes in again. He's like, all right, shit. She's not she's not looking at me. He goes in, does a spin attack, charges his attack. She's not looking. He's like, yes, but uh, heavy because attack. she's not looking. He, did you see that? He missed. <laughs> because she's not paying attention, he just hits he hits his friend's pole. <laughs> Damn, and he's like, oh, missed, God, God damn it. He's like, ah. Oh. And then, then he just kind of leaves after this. He's like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> All right, he's going in. He goes in for the down slash attack. And changes <laughs> to like do like a guard. You see that? <laughs> because Ray wasn't paying attention. See this? He goes zoom. Yeah. See how he drops that? It looks that? like he blocks Ray's lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it looks but like that's he's going after. To block her lightsaber. But look, see, he's attacking her from above, and then he decides right. to transition to a block so she can hit it afterwards. See how she loads up to hit the attack? And he, he actually he completely he, misses. He actually just from, pu- he he pulls in because he doesn't want to hit her because you know they're they're she, she's not supposed to die here, right? So, well, the way and, I'm seeing it is he's he's like, oh shit, she's about to take out my legs, so I better switch no, up real quick. No, no. Okay, look, <laughs> look, he has the advantage, right? He he he's hitting on top of her. Like, look, he look, his sword's already down here. If he just hit her, it would have been up here. Okay. All right, let, let's take a look into this guy's life really quick. He's like, I get to take out Ray right now, but if I do, I get to lose my legs. I don't no. want to lose my legs. Dude, you don't <laughs> understand. Look, did you see my cursor? Yeah. See how the blade is down here? I do. Alrighty. Well, it's blocked by that guy, but I do see the angle. Right, right. Now see this angle right here? See? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, he would have hit her. And look, her lightsaber's way over here. Yeah, she's far away from him. But she changes. Yeah, but he has a giant ass stick. And he changes, so and look, she only initiates this attack. After he does this for some reason. Like, see how she loads up? And she's like, oh, shit. Okay, now I'm going to attack the bleed. Other Red Pool guy, they all kind of disband, right? And <laughs> I don't know what this guy's doing. So this is the other guy, right? They all separate. They're like, shit. And then this guy just dips. He's like, I'm out of here. He gallops away. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing. But they all leave. And then so Ray can kill this guy right here. And then they all come in for the, the, the main attack here. What is this? Uh, yeah, 152 to 154. All right, so they all come in from the main attack. This is actually pretty sick. 
Not gonna lie. Okay. She does a kick. But they all go back. <laughs> Did you see that? They go back. <laughs> she kicks the guy in the middle, but they all fly back. <laughs> That's <laughs> cr- That's a little cringe. Well, actually, do you any comments? Because there's a lot to go for. It might be easy to forget something. I did take notes, though, I, so forget it. I mean, I, I just, I get it's I see what you're saying. They, they're, oh, swinging I their bl- they're swinging their blades but around, and then they just, it's like, there's not really anything going on. It's just way too, way too nitpicky for me to really. I don't think it is. It. I don't think it is. You see this guard back here, guys? Watch this. Dun, 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 dun. He goes for an attack. <laughs> but he just, he actually lets go of his weapon too. It looks like I didn't even notice that. He, he emoted, bro, by accident. He did an accidental emote. And then, so this is all fine, right? Pretty cool. Grabs him, kicks him. Yeats him, pretty neat. All right, we, we go. To, we go to Ray. Okay, this is all pretty cool. I think um, this is cool. This is cool. It, it's kind of cringe when you realize that she could just kind of like not do that, but it, it's whatever. Like she could. Just I like, mean, it looks like the whole point of that weapon is to like, you know, lock your lightsaber in there somehow. I don't. I don't know but how she could just but... lean her lean her lightsaber forward if she wanted to. She finds a way out. Awesome. Really cool. So. <laughs> I found this so funny. What's this guy? What was this guy doing the whole time? Was he just sitting there the entire time? Was he bro just cooking? If only I knew. Look, at what's going on over here? What was he doing? Was he like he bro was cooking? Was he like was he the guy from like this guy who did the first two attacks and like failed? Like is it, is it this guy right here? Did he just like leave and be like okay? Be. I'm, he like re- he had to recuperate his thoughts and go again this is all really cool i have no issues with any of this yeah this, this oh okay awesome. so this this is shit actually okay we're gonna we're gonna slow down so you can see so this is cool yeets it open this guy comes in what what did bro do you, you see this <laughs> look look at his weapon see how he just yeets it <laughs> he's like no, no. <laughs> bro goes for the attack and Kylo must I mean, have used, did like, Kylo's some... cross guard not like hit it? It's off screen, so. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's not enough to just make you like look at him. See how he just eats his weapon? He's like, nope, I'm done, and gets stabbed. <laughs> well, I'm saying the cross guard hits his thing with enough force to knock it out of his hands. Uh... You know what I'm saying? No, his cross guard is right here. See this right here. See I know, but right his here? long ass pole is also off the screen. Yeah, right but I mean, I don't even really like arguing about this sort of thing, or like <laughs> because it's just too nitpicky for me. Like, I don't think about this sort of stuff, and nor do I even want like. Right. Well, I'm really showing you guys me. anyway. This is this is why I hate. I don't like this scene. Okay, so we we come. This guy's pulls over here anyway, but it's just but it is goofy. Like, look at this. He just throws his pole, like just throws it out. Like he, there's there's nothing that caused him to let go of it. He just like no, nah, I'm done. Kill me. <laughs> This was a cool scene. Wouldn't have cooler if that's what killed the guy, but whatever. It's still cool. <clears throat> I think I think I know where we're getting to. I like that the whole room is burning down <laughs> while this is happening. I know. I think that's yeah. It's cool. An incredible uh, addition to it. The fall of the empire. It's symbolic. It's crazy. You know what else is crazy? Right here, falling forward to a to a, to a teep. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. He kicks him, but she falls forward. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to bring this up. Look at this guy. See how he sacrifices himself to save his friend. See that? He's want to kill this guy right here. Right. He disarms him. He's homies. like, no. This man's a hero. We need to know more about him. They must be homies. The guy, the guy in the back looked forward like shocked. <laughs> he killed him. Okay. So this is, that's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I Why mean, did he let go of his weapon? Yeah, and let go of There's definitely some inexperience going on there. I would have been no, scared, it's too. Dumb. If you're wielding the weapon, you don't just let go of your weapon doing something like that. <clears throat> but I don't think you guys, like, I don't think we're on the same wavelength when it comes to that. Like, what is this? Why, why did he just let go of his weapon? I've, he didn't need to. I've never been in a life or death situation like that, so I can't, can't really speak on that. Here's the thing. He's been training for years on this stuff. He's a Sith Lord, okay? And one of the first things you learn when you wield a weapon is not let go of it, right? And he just... He, missed, he, he made a mistake, that, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. letting go of Robin's a pretty big mistake. It's something that wouldn't happen if um Or he's he, just inexperienced and too emotional. He's not though. <laughs> but you just want to let go of your weapon. You just want to let go of your weapon. It's not realistic. It's not at all. Uh, that's just not something I can nitpick because it just goes past like what I care about. I think this is funny. So actually, I think this seems really stupid. So we're going through this. Uh, yep, right here. She's stuck. All right. See how she's he's like getting ready to, to, to cut her, right? Mm hmm. She thinks she does the unthinkable. No one's ever thought of this. She lets go of the weapon. And he just lets her do this. The thing is, like, right before this, he was threatening to cut her. And then he just, like, no, nope, you can go grab that. That's fine. And she takes right. out her that's, knees. PewDiePie would be proud so of her. <laughs> it's crazy. It's wild. I hope you guys at least understand why I think this one's stupid. <laughs> yeah, this is the first one where I'm like, that is goofy. Because, look, he's, like, like the whole reason why her hand's there is so he can cut her to stop her from cutting him. And then he just, he just like, you know what? It's fine. You can you can duck and attack and take out my knees. Let's go. Also, too, there's something else that happens before this that I think is really funny. Alrighty. He cuts her through the belly. But it's not there anymore. She absorbed the blade. It's crazy. She's Gojo or something. She's using Affinity. I don't even know it. The blade's gone, though, and didn't cut her. <laughs> and then, yeah, I don't have any issues with this part either. This is kind of cool. So that said, I'm actually putting it in D tier because... Uh, it is fun and dramatic and does look pretty. Uh, but choreograph wise, I think it is absolutely hot garbage. Um, yeah, no, I'm leaving mine in A tier. None of that stuff really bothered me. Uh, the Ray dropping her lightsaber was goofy, but that's, <laughs> you know. I could tell I'm you don't give it. You didn't right care there. at all. Like I said, nothing really bothered me and nothing that I was going to really notice if I was watching it at full speed or really care about because i could find an explanation in my head like oh this must have happened oh this must have happened like if i'm being completely honest we could probably slow down 90 percent of these fights and find some really goofy shit i realize i didn't summarize my point here so i'll do it now first off this wasn't supposed to be the conversation of what ifs for example why didn't he thrust why didn't this guy jump out of the way i don't like those kind of conversations when it comes in the film it gets way too nitpicky you see this stuff in real life with MMA and UFC where people say things like he could have done this, but he didn't do that. That wasn't the conversation here. The point I was trying to get to is how poor the choreography is, which is why I'm ranking it so low. The really only good way to do that is actually slow down the fight because there's a lot going on here, especially in the beginning, Ray and Kylo are fighting three or four people each. So you have to slow it down to actually look at what each person is doing, which I don't consider nitpicking. And when you do slow it down, you realize you realize it seemed to be more of like a rough sketch. They're, they didn't put a lot of work into making the choreography feel very good. Um, um, or I guess look very good. It feels good, but it doesn't look very good, especially after the first time you watch it. Obviously, I know the idea was probably to focus on Ray and, and Kylo. I'm sure that's what the director had in mind. But you watch it again, you start to look at other things. And that's where you start to realize they didn't really put much work into choreography. And I have to rank it lower. For example, all the fights from the originals and the prequels, especially the prequels, you could tell they put time into it. They tried to make it feel good. They were inspired by fencing and kendo. And then they add flair fantasy into it, make it theatrical and actually fit with the Star Wars universe because they actually have fighting forms in the Star Wars universe. And they try to complement that. And it looks really good. You don't see instances of people randomly dropping their weapon. You don't see instances of someone attacking someone else from behind purposely missing because the person they were attacking was doing something else because they actually planned it out and that's the point i was trying to address was they didn't put any work into the choreography of this fight i think it could have looked a lot better if they did again i know they were kind of relying on all the chaos to kind of mask mask the poor choreography which is fine that's like not necessarily a bad thing but when it comes to rating fights with lightsabers uh it is going to affect my rating just to provide an example of thing would have been better instead of kylo just dropping his lightsaber would have been cool if that guard did a disarm or instead of ray kicking one imperial guard for all three of them to go back she could have used a force push it would actually have been cool to see some more force in this fight i think there was a lot more opportunity to make this way cooler and it just kind of felt flat in space for me and i do know disney star wars in general doesn't put a lot of emphasis on choreography but it doesn't look that bad because it's kind of hard to make it look really bad if there's only two people fighting but seeing 10 people fight all at once really exposed how little effort they actually put into put into the fight scenes here it's just go out there swing your lightsaber around here's this rough sketch and we'll try to make it look good in editing and i don't like that so that's why i put it in d tier yeah i am ready i think we can all, all right i'm gonna go ahead and going. toss this in cringe right away <laughs> yeah and not much i don't to be said about that really have too much to say about it Hot, garbage, greatest blue ball in all of history. 
I, when I was watching this as a big Luke Skywalker fan, I was more excited than ever before in my modern adult or modern in my adult life. I uh, <laughs> I was uh, quite quite frankly I was fanboying there in my in my theater seat. But um, no, okay, once it was Charlie. revealed that that Luke was uh, perhaps or in fact just a figment of uh, the Force. And he was really on some faraway planet, uh, intensely floating, like a guru, uh, fabricating this version of himself here so he could, what, distract them for a moment I'd like, while they escape? I'd like to learn how to int- intensely float. Like, this was, <laughs> this was just complete... This was the biggest... Excuse my language, even though we've cursed many times. This is, my, this is the biggest fuck you to Star Wars fans. It is. Perhaps yeah. in the whole movie. It's a giant uh, It's finger. just like, no, no, this Luke Skywalker character that you love so much, you've, we've dragged him through the dirt this whole movie, and now, just to, like, spit on really? your open wound, yeah. you're just going to put him here, and he's going to be this prime version of himself that just doesn't exist. You haven't seen this character in years and years, and you're still not seeing him now. And he's about to die from overexertion because he used the force <laughs> too strongly. So it's so bad. Kylo Ren is all bent out he of shape, fighting him, all nervous. Kylo Ren's could have been something. Too. <laughs> could have been something really cool. Like if you look at this picture; it's a beautiful picture. It could have been God, such a great it's fight. It could have been so epic. Such a See, beautiful like, planet too. When they it all started shot out. Him. Yeah, it started out so so good too. Like when they all shot at him, and like I thought he was there the whole time. Yeah. We thought uh, we were about to I'd see like some to... very neat uh, force abilities Luke that we shit. haven't seen seen before, and uh, but no, yeah, it just all turned out to be a farce. So it's not even really a lightsaber fight. Yeah, and I'd like to point out as well, like the potential was literally all there. Like with what you said, how it was leading up to this, the um, and then Kylo gets out, and clearly, as we know so far in the story. Kylo has an extreme emotional attachment to Luke, uh, negatively and positively, to see him. And he's already killed Han. Like, if he goes toe-to-toe with Luke, like, holy shit, this could be the two out of three of the originals that he's killed. Right? Or, he like, almost killed his mother. You know what I mean? And really, he really almost killed movie. his mother. You know? And, oh yeah, he did. He literally shot at the window and blew her ass up to smithereens. Like... That would have been really cool to see them fight after seeing him slay his father in his eye, in his mind slay his mother and now go to toe to toe with his old master, his uncle, and someone who he really hates, supposedly. Like it was all leading up to something fantastic and it was just one big slap in the face when he pokes his lightsaber through Luke's stomach. And it goes right through, and Luke just smirks. Yeah, says, it's it's so Stay disappointing mad to the Star Wars fan. Yeah, it was so sad. Honestly, it could have been so much more. You know, like how Disney Anyways. likes to do that thing where like everyone like rocks, kind of like hover and float around you and shit nowadays. Yeah, dude. Literally. Luke Skywalker is probably I mean, the only person like an actual Star right. Wars that has the power to do that, and it would have been really cool to see him go all out using the force um mm-hmm. i don't know throwing over those uh whatever you call them attes or whatever ATATs and all that stuff would have been super super cool mm-hmm. it would have been cool to di- see luke just do anything <clears throat> but also too except not um, be there for like there actually isn't even much here anyway like we're not liking the the plot behind this um but there actually isn't any fighting in this either because Luke Skywalker just dodges it, and then I mean, there's no the no blade, attack. no, no blade blade. Yeah. yeah, so it's not even. There is only one blade. Even there, if you yeah. like this movie, fight wise, it's not even. There's no, there's nothing going on. <laughs> I also would like to point out how he's using Anakin's lightsaber, even though. Oh, you're right. Anakin's lightsaber has. I remember that now? Yeah. You know. One well, he's been destroyed, oh, wait. and he he's, also he's threw it. Force projecting him. it. Well, I know, I know, he's force projecting, but okay. I just think it would have been cooler to see the great lightsaber. Really, what I'm well, I kind of want to say why it's 
He's supposed to be depicting this like version of himself that he used to like be. His, of when he knew Kylo be, or whatever. Yeah, something something like that. I remember. I remember. I remember people that, talking about why he had the Anakin's lightsaber. I don't really remember what they came. Well, to I remember thinking now. that though, Aaron, when you brought that up. Um, I was willing to see the green lightsaber too. I thought it'd been really cool, and I, I actually remember thinking that like, oh, it's not the green one. Uh, yeah, so, I, which is I kind of another letdown, to be honest. But whatever. <laughs> I think I, that, like, it's cool in understanding that he used the Anakin's lightsaber. It's like, yes, he's depicting this older version of himself in which Kylo knew him. But I also think it's like, why does Luke still need to be using Anakin's lightsaber after all this time? He also didn't have access to Luke Anakin's lightsaber when he knew Kylo because it was floating in his cut off hand out in space. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe there he was using it as like Ryan Johnson was like, Oh, this is the Easter egg, like the dead giveaway that this isn't actually Luke. Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, he probably felt clever. It just, it just almost takes away from the fact. Wait, Sorry? didn't didn't Luke um, throw that lightsaber off the cliff earlier in the movie? Yeah, he exactly. Did, yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe it was supposed to even get us more hype, so we'd be even more blue balled. Like, oh, he went and oh. grabbed it. Either he that... went and grabbed it, and he's redeeming himself. Yeah, it's it's redemption. It's a symbolism of redemption. Yeah. I think is what he was redemption. going for. Man, Ryan right. Johnson really probably patted himself on that when writing that. Yeah, that he part pat- down. he surely patted himself on the like, back. Like, oh, coming full one. circle. This is what they do in stories, you know. He's like, now this is a masterpiece. <laughs> Full redemption arc right there. He went and grabbed the lightsaber. <laughs> he went and grabbed the <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> you sound like crazy. Dude, bro, you... <laughs> All right, homies. You guys ready for this last grand fight? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell y- hell yes I am. Um I'm throwing it in D tier. Yeah, I'll throw it in D tier as well. Yeah, I'm way ahead of you guys. That's really the I'm so of confused in this entire fight. <laughs> yeah, we were watching this earlier in we all kind of came to the determination of like, we had to watch it multiple times. We were kind of just Here's, like, what the yeah, fuck is I, going on? All I remember <laughs> happening is, as Gabe pointed out earlier off camera, off mic, I should say, is Ray just randomly floats up into the sky and backflips <laughs> extremely high. Extremely the most majestic high. backflip of yeah. all time for no Fucking, reason. Yeah, the most random backflip. <laughs> What appears to be over a wave that was completely unnecessary. That's all I remember. And I yeah, remember no, the, fight, the this fight is was one kind of... of fun between Kylo and Ray. Ky- Kylo's appearance is always very <laughs> cool. I love his stage appearance or on screen appearance, I should say. Very, very cool. I've watched this fight like three or four times when we talked about it. And yeah, like I, I still don't remember it really. It's weird. Oh, I remember one more thing. I remember, I remember Ray turns. Stuff. I remember she turns around and she <clears throat> screams at Finn and force pushes him back, and he and he's like, "Ray, I have to stop. I have to get her." Something like that. Yeah, like we, I don't know what the hell is going know. on this whole fight. The, the, like sh- we kept switching around camera shots. That's that's a Kylo. He gets stabbed. Yeah, in this he gets stabbed at the oh, end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a goofy. It's goofy. She heals him. She did heal him, yeah. Raise a healer, man. She, she, she man, will, the only reason stats. it's not in cringe. Oh my god, is it cringe here? Yeah, I think you convinced me it's cringe here. <laughs> like uh, I was going to say, the only the reason cringe it's not in cringe here is because the fight is entertaining and the choreography is like fun. But then I look at yeah. Obi Wan and Darth Vader, and it's like same thing. The choreography in the fight is fun, but yeah, it's cringe. The thing that the cringe. thing that separates cringe from D to me is like. A lore breaking like heresy. So yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. Heresy. I would say that the I kind of want to. I kind of want to leave cringe. You're right. I put it back for those two. Like, (laughs) I I feel like cringe isn't as bad when you put this one in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I want to let those fuckers marinate in cringe. (laughs) You're right. I want them to to burn in hell, burn in cringe here. I want to put them in timeout and let them rethink their life. For real, but. They need to just what does Obi-Wan say? Go home. Rethink your life. Go home. You, you want to go home and rethink your life. I want to yeah. go home and rethink my life. I can't believe there's lore behind that guy, too. Like there he is. He did. He did it, bro. Life. 
Yeah, he, he, he put his life back together. It's crazy. I know. No but then he, bro, or whatever they're called. He shook out of it and got back oh. into drug dealing later. No, oh. the forest trick wore off, unfortunately. Damn it. The forest. It's just another drug. Obi Wan basically hit him with another drug to like make him do good things, and then it wore off. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> the anti narcotic. The anti narcotic wore off. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's everything, isn't it? I have no more in my list. Yeah. Obi Wan yeah, gets so, worse. I'm uh, very happy with my list. I'm happy with my list as well. Um, I love yeah, my S tier list. Obi Wan can mind trick me to do a lot of crazy things, bro. <laughs> what? That's all I got to say.